wash it up right in your kitchen sink even with i even use some dish soap sometime to work into my brushes to get that out now watch this a little finger is going around in circle okay see we're going to touch let's go over this one more time i want to review this with you really quick because this is so important and it'll make it look so light and pretty when you're done you're going to take and we're going to take this water and we're going to pick it up at least three times and see as I'm going in a half circle, I mean, I'm going around in a circle, I'm grabbing a little bit of green until I have an inky consistency, not pasty, not watery. And you know what you could do? You can run it right here to see if it's watery. So you can run it along there and say, oops, too thin before you touch your piece, okay? Now I've got a little bit of yellow there, but that's okay. Roll the brush. See, so roll it and come out of it, then we're ready to go. Now watch how I'm going to put this in my hand. We're going to take this brush, remember like a pencil, I was showing earlier today, if you've been watching us, we're going to put it up like this, this is a pencil, we're going to pull it straight up to the first knuckle, and then we want the paint to run down to the tip, so we're going to make big circles like this, all right, so practice, one, two, three, reverse direction, and two tight circles to the, to the right, all right. And this is all, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Hopefully your piece is dry, so you're not running your fingers through it, but you get a touch and make circles. Now, we have a lot of lefties out there that want to learn how to paint, and they're always thinking, oh, this is too hard for a lefty, but it really isn't. All you're going to do, remember that you guys adapt to the right-hand world in different ways than, um, than we might be doing it here. So what I want you to do is turn it so it's comfortable for you. And remember that, like when I'm doing the leaves, a lot of times I will take this stroke and I will be push, turn, lift to the right. You're going to have to put it in your left hand and you'll be pulling it towards your body. Now remember, you just turn your projects around so it's easy for you to grab them, all right, and start painting. Remember, your hand goes out like this so your rosebuds and your leaves face out. And so it's a very simple technique of laying your designs step by step, which was the big rose, then the small roses, then you come in with your big leaves, and then your small leaves, and then we're going to come in with our wisteria, or we can do little five petal flowers. Now, I want to show you, let's take and clean this up and show you the difference. Sometimes I do wisteria, especially if I'm first starting out, and I want something really quick, and that's pretty impressive too, because it really looks like hanging flowers there. Okay, so I'm going to pick up some white and purple. And all I would do is come in here. Now I can turn it around instead of the purple. Watch this. Instead of the purple out like this, my little five petal flower dip the handle, put a little center. Instead of doing that, look what happens when I turn it the other way and I come in here and, whoops, too much paint. Remember what I said? There's no mistakes. I just come right back here, pick up fresh more white fresh paint and let's stroke right over this okay push left push left push left all right now look at the difference and i overlap the little petals on top of each other see i picked up a little green there it's actually really pretty okay now look at the difference when we have the light on the outside of the petal same stroke as the purple one over here that we did with the purple on the outside. This has white. And it just gives a whole different look. There we go. Remember, you can come in. I use light pink there. We can come in and do some dark green, just solid green, and have fun while we're doing it. See, you've already learned how to paint wildflowers, roses, and sunflowers, but there's still more to come, and I'll be right back. Hello, everyone. I'm Jeff Mose, along with Rhea Fiken and our special guest, Donna Dewberry, and we invite you to stay tuned for the conclusion of today's one-stroke painting with Donna Dewberry. This is a brand new how-to special here on public television, and we have some very special thank you gifts to offer you today, which we'll be telling you about in just a little bit. 
I hope that you're enjoying the program as much as we are here today, and we're actually showing you how easy it is. It is very, very easy to learn the one-stroke method that Donna has developed. And what we're going to do, as I mentioned, this is a brand new how-to special here on public television. And you know how you can always count on public television to bring you the best in how-to programming. But to keep bringing you specials like this, we need some help from a very special person. And that person is you. Only your, you, our viewers, can help ensure that we continue to produce and broadcast television of the highest quality. The best in educational, children's, and of course, wonderful how-to programs like this Donna Dewberry special that you're watching today. Please pick up the phone and give us a call right now at the number on your screen. And today, for a pledge of $150, well, you will be well on your way to doing some wonderful painting with the One Stroke Ultimate Combo Kit. Now, this kit contains three one-stroke workshop videos that are 60 minutes each in length. It also contains a 32-page one-stroke workbook, complete paint kit with brushes, three pattern sheets, one-stroke scruffy brush, and reusable practice sheets. And now, here's Rhea Fiken and Donna Dewberry, who will tell you more about it. Thank you very much, Jeff. What are you going to be painting, Donna? Sunflowers. That's and going to make it feel cheery. Yeah, and they're easy. They're a great thing to start out with, with your first project. And I take my scruffy brush that I was showing you earlier, and we're just pouncing two colors. And that's the key. We're always putting two colors on here. And then we pounce around. See, we get it like a chocolate donut with uh -huh. chocolate icing. Then we're coming right here. We're going to touch, push, turn left. You know what the best part of this, too, is that this is the only place that you can, right now, as this gift, is the only place that you can get the, this combination. It is Three just Three-hour videos. And the videos are what I wish I had at home. That's why I created them, so that you can do this at home like I did while I was raising my seven children. I would sit down at night at my dining room table and have fun. Oh, and have fun and do something so very beautiful and creative. Now... See what that? Kind of, see yeah. the brown? See the brown streaking from, from by me touching the wet paint? Push, turn left. It's acrylic paint. It's water-based. And painting flowers are usually crafters or people who want to paint their most difficult thing to paint because you have to know blending, shading, and highlighting. Uh -huh. And you know what? In one stroke, you blend, shade, and highlight. And you know what? Because I taught myself, I don't even know why it's supposed to be dark or light here or there. <laughs> I just make it kind of look good. So we know? can just follow your directions. That's right. I have a couple things I want right. to ask you. First of all, a lot of people who are calling in and making pledges also have questions. Okay. They want once more to ask you, if they are allergic to paints, can they use your paints? You know what? It's water-based acrylic, so it's a lot less problem with allergies than anything you can imagine. And you know, I'm not saying foolproof that nobody would be allergic to, but it, we haven't had anybody who say they are. Right. Another question. Besides painting on paper, how other, how, what other surfaces? Oh, you're going to love this because I show you in the videos, you can paint on metal, fabric. You can paint this on your walls. Is that oh, too that's fun? that's incredible. You can paint it on your walls. You could just sit and paint on the plastic. That's what I like to tell you is that when you're taking these three videos, you can continually learn from one one-hour video to the next. You can work all year long just practicing and creating I, flowers I, I, Jeff, on is, all sorts of surfaces. I don't want to interrupt you, but that mm -hmm. is just amazing to me. And of course, I do want to remind you that as amazing as it is, you can do it too. And you can do it, but you need all the things to do it. So I'm urging you to call the number on your screen and make a pledge of $150. Because when you Just do, we're going to send you Donna Dewberry's One Stroke Ultimate Combo. Now, the kit has three One Stroke Workshop videos, and they're 60 minutes each. A 32 page One Stroke Workbook. And that has a paint kit with brushes, it has three pattern sheets, it has one stroke scruffy brush, and it has a reusable practice sheet. Now, I'd like to just interrupt you for one minute. Sure. If, I'm going to ask you to change back to another color paint if you okay. don't mind. I think this is so amazing. This is the reusable teaching guide. 
Show us how it you works. You know what? I did. I laminated my strokes. And these are like the teacher strokes right at home with you. And wouldn't you love that? You take a class, you think you're going to remember it, and then you get home and you go, oh, no, what did she say? Look, you practice right on top of here. Right. You hold your brush handle straight up and down, practice on here, and then you know what you do? What? You wipe it off and practice again. What do you wipe it off with? Well, anything. Paper towel. Paper water, towel will yes. do it? Yeah, a wet, you know, wet one, whatever. You just wipe it off and this practice again. This is really great. Because you know something, then, Donna? I think you really are artistic. Now, if, if well, you're not... I didn't know I was. Okay, but if you're not real artistic, it's practice makes perfect. That's right. And this is the way you can practice. That's right. And you know what you do? You just keep picking up paint, no water. You're stroking on this side. You do the first stroke, and then the second stroke, and then the third stroke. And before you know it, you have the whole rosebud. And it's real simple, and you can be doing that right away. And this is a part of the combo kit. But we have a couple of other thank you gifts that you might be interested in. So let's go to Jeff, and he'll tell you about it. But call. That's what we're here for. Thank you very much, Rhea. As a matter of fact, we do have some wonderful thank you gifts at other pledge levels. With a pledge of $90, we'll say thank you by sending you Donna Dewberry's One Stroke Combo. Now, the One Stroke Combo kit contains one brush stroke basics. Now, this video is 30 minutes in length. It also contains the Basic Stroke Workbook, which is 36 pages in length that you just saw Donna and Rhea referring to. You also get the One Rosebud Reusable Teaching Guide and a Paint Kit. Or how about this, with a pledge of $75, we'll send you Donna Dewberry's One Stroke Basics video and teaching guide. Now this kit contains a One Brush Stroke Basics video, 30 minutes in length, and One Rosebud Reusable Teaching Guide and Instructions. Now we have volunteers in our studios who are ready to take your pledge, and please, make your call right now, and let's welcome Donna Dewberry into the public television family with your financial pledge of support. Please give us a call right now. You can use your credit card or send a check. You'll be helping to support the great programming here on public television. Now let's go back to Rhea and Donna. Donna, do you ever get tired of painting? Oh, I love it. You know what? I just lose myself into it when I'm painting. I'm just having fun while I'm doing it, and I'm putting all these bright, vivid colors together. And it's a great thing. Just think, if you can learn how to do something that you love, and there's a couple different things you can do. You can give them as gifts. That saves you money. What? Decorate your house. Absolutely. That saves you money. These are the things I always did. And then I decided, I want to go sell my things at the craft stores. I'm at the craft shows. And go around and sell things to other people to make their homes pretty. And they love it. Well, there is so much that you can do with these paints. The phones are getting very, very busy. I do want to ask you to please call in and make your pledges right now because you will enjoy this so much. One other thing, Donna, what a great gift to get one of Donna's uh, combo ultimate combo gifts or any of the uh, gifts that we're telling you about because program. you can just give it to somebody they can do it you can do it that's right and I i'm just amazed how beautiful this isn't is isn't this fun Rhea? and you know what just think if you make mistakes there, you know everybody as they're learning they're going oh i hate this i wish i didn't do that like that <laughs> all you do is pick up fresh paint go over it so there are no mistakes so you're having fun and if you ever thought that you would love to be an artist guess what you don't have to know how to draw. You don't have to know how to design something. I have it all right in front of you. You're watching me. You're duplicating what I'm saying. You're putting the plastic. You want to hold that up and let's show them again? Sure, absolutely. You put the plastic right on top of the teacher's stroke. We practice with me on the video. This is what we're going to paint. Like, these are our designs that we paint. The book's full of them. Oh, they're full all beautiful. Oh. It's not vegetables. I'm losing myself here. There's fruits <laughs> and flowers and animals. And this is the only tape uh, that I have out there with animals on it. And I think everybody will love that. And just think, what a great thing to change somebody's life. Give them a gift. You're helping them with free TV, public TV, where they can watch it in their home, even if they don't have cable. Isn't that great? It is wonderful. And we hope that you are going to call in right now. We have some wonderful gifts for you. Uh, 150 is the Donna Dewberry One Stroke Ultimate Combo. And that has three one-stroke workshop videos, a 32-page one-stroke workbook, and it has a paint kit with three brushes and all sorts of wonderful things in it. But that isn't the only thing. We have the $90 Donna Dewberry one-stroke combo kit, and we also have one at the $75 level. So call.
One stroke painting is a great way to decorate all kinds of surfaces, even your walls. That's why one stroke painting is so versatile. Let me show you how easy it is to paint a topiary on your wall. The first thing we're going to do is pick up our acrylic paint, same paint that's on your wall, and use our sponge. And what we're going to do on the sponge is we're going to fill the sponge with like a butter pecan. Sometimes I use this tan color with a white, but this time I'm going to see it's all tan. A brown for shading, for depth. So in one stroke of the sponge, I'm going to have the shading all there for you. The, and what I do before I get started is I take a pencil because when I rub this pencil line with the sponge that's dampened as I'm painting, it will rub off the pencil lines for you. So what I've done here is I've already penciled this in and started sponging the base of the topiary and the container. And I'm going to go ahead and now paint on the container the rest of the way so you can see how I accomplished that. I have the pencil line here and then I'm going to start right along here and I'm going to go along that pencil line. I have to get down so we can see it better, okay? Along the pencil line. See my fingers are along the sponge edge? That's going to help me get a straighter edge. And I'm going to come on this side, sponge around, just that easy. Keep picking up paint if you're, if you're getting slim of it right here, okay? Now, all you're going to do is make a circle motion in between here and there, okay? Filling it in. Now, you can leave it like this, or you can embellish this a little bit. And I have chosen to go back in here and put some grooves in this container. So you can look at any pot that's in your garden area and decide how you want this to look. See, if I don't like something, I'm just going back over it. And I didn't tell you, but the first thing we do with the sponge is we have it dampened, and then we load it with paint. Okay? Now we're going to come back in here. You're going to be amazed how quick... You can put this container, like down your hallway or in a bathroom or something where, where you really, you know, it can be costly sometimes to get pictures. And also, sometimes there's not enough room as you're decorating to put a picture on a hall wall because people might, or especially my children, might get in there and knock that wall. So I would sometimes not want to hang pictures there. Okay, so there's our container. We've got some depth. We want to come in and do these little loops here like handles, and I've used a flat brush now. It was dampened flat brush, butter pecan, worked in some maple syrup here. I'm just going to come here and do a little loop. More paint. See, just come right in here and put more paint. And then we're going to go and pick up a scruffy brush. Let's go over here. Just that easy. And I don't worry about being perfect because I usually put some moss down there anyway. Now, I'm going to pick up a big scruffy. No, I'm not. I'm going to pick up my other plate, and let's do our trunk next. I almost got ahead of myself here, because what we're going to do is I'm going to pick up some white, maybe some butter pecan and white, floating medium. See, I've got this brush all full, and I'm going to dip in the floating medium, work this in, and this brush is actually a one-inch wide flat brush. Now, this is great if you've never painted before. You'll be amazed that you sponged on this container and you're painting a tree the first thing you've ever painted. Would that be wonderful? Well, with my technique, you're going to be able to do that. All right, so we're going to come right here. All right. Right here. See, now what I'm doing, I'm starting down here at the base. I touch, lean, leading with the white. Okay. Touch, lean, leading with the white. And that's how you're going to do your trunk. Now you're going to continue this, making the trunk as big as you want it. And see how I don't make it exact. I kind of maybe even take some vines out from it. Okay? Now then you're going to come in here and moss on the mossing. But while well, I've already got this in my brush, I'm going to come out and make some of the taller longer branches. Now, when I'm doing this, this is what I want you to do. I want you to stand back and I want you to see if it's wide enough compared to the size of your container. Now, I did this up higher. Sometimes I would usually put this down on the baseboard. And then I would come in and paint the brand, the trunk as tall as I would like it. And then, sometimes I love putting this in a corner, or not quite in the corner, but off centered. And then have some of the branches peep onto the other side of the wall, even on the ceiling in a bathroom is great. All right, and before you know it, you're a decorator and a painter. 
Look at this. We're going to come here. I even have some pencil mark here, so all I'm doing is going to cover that a little bit. All right. Okay, now we're going to come in here. Okay. There we go. Now you can fill in more later if you don't feel like you have enough. But let's go back to the scruffy brush. Now that I, I, while I have that brush in my hand, I go ahead and finish everything I was using that brush for. Now we're going to use the scruffy. This is a really big scruff brush. And this can be an old painter's brush, any kind of brush that's really fanned out and big and fluffy, okay? Now what we're going to do with that brush while it's dry is we're going to pounce it in to half green and half yellow, maybe some butter pecan. See, I want to get some brown in there. Maybe even some darker brown. Okay? See, multicolors on the end of the brush. Okay? Now what we're going to do is come right down here, and I like to pounce all in down onto this pot. See, I'm covering the trunk, and what I might even do, you notice I keep going and getting paint. What I might even do is come up a little bit on the trunk, and if I have a part of the container that I just didn't like the way it shadowed or shaded on there, I can come down here some on that. You want to just fill in your pot, moss all in here. Isn't that, isn't that fun? Now, watch this. I'm leaning the brush on the edge when I want to taper it down small. When you get through painting a topiary, you will just look at it and say, I can't believe I did that, because it's actually very simple, but it looks so awesome when somebody looks at it in your house, and they say, you had an artist come do that. It's going to be amazing, because you can say you did it. Now, what I like to do, too, I just like to give you a little hint that's of something that's really fun, is you know how we just did this container? I'm going to show you how to do leaves all up here, but just imagine if you took that mossing that you just did on the base here and made a big ball topiary just with the, the pouncing of the scruffy. And it's just that easy. You just want to make sure that you have all those shaded colors. Don't pounce till it's one color and make sure that you have all the different shades. Now, I'm going to go back to my one inch brush because I'm going to start adding some leaves on here for you, okay? And this is what we're going to do. We're going to pick up on my brown and white brush. I'm picking up the yellow and the green, the, the darker color on the darker side. Okay. There we go. Dip into the floating, floating medium there. Okay. Lots of paint on that brush, at least two-thirds full. Now, what I'm going to do is not right on top of the branch but away from the branch, so then I can bring more branches into it, more vines, or see I'll come there and bring it into it. I'm going to come out here more and start adding the leaves. Now, what you're going to see on walls is that you're going to see sometimes you get this dry, really dry edge. So all you're going to do when that happens is go back in. See? Let me turn this around because my floating medium's being tilted here. Is running across my plate. But see this floating medium? Be sure that you go into that every so often, every couple strokes. Maybe pick up some brown when you're doing walls because the wall is acrylic paint and it really absorbs the moisture in this paint. So you'll have a dry edge, especially if your paint on the wall is flat. Now what I like to tell you is when I'm painting on walls, if you have the opportunity to, to pre-paint the wall before you start painting, then what I would recommend is a satin or eggshell finish acrylic paint on the wall. Like this has a pretty soft color, amazing looking color here. That's better to paint with satin or eggshell. Please don't use shiny, anything like semi-gloss or gloss, unless you're in a bathroom. Sometimes you have to because it will be harder for your paint. It will go slick, but it won't look as nice, and it will scrub, scrub off too easily, usually. All right? Now, when this is all done and all painted, you can scrub this wall with soap and water, especially if your children get their hands on it, little fingerprints down the hall. You can scrub with soap and water, and you know what? It will last on the wall just like your house paint. If you scrub your house paint too hard, what happens is it wear down to the drywall. Same thing with this. Now see how I'm filling this in? And if you notice, every once in a while, leading with that lighter edge, I'll do this number. See how I'm ever so lightly fanning the brush 
on the edge of the bristles and that just kind of makes it look fuller and then sometimes I like to come in there fill the, fill the brush with a lot of floating medium and come in the background and do some shadow leaves just all floated real thin looking transparent leaves to fill in an area and then you can even come back and fill it in with thick painted solid paint just like that now all you do is fill that in as full or as light as you wish to but you're going to have a, a ball doing this because it's so much fun and you can even run little vines up the trunk that's one of my favorite things to paint. I paint it in all sorts of locations. So remember, just be creative and enjoy yourself while you're doing it. Now, what I want to show you is a lot of some other ways and other surfaces and how to prepare those surfaces so that you can paint one stroke painting all through your house. Now, what I have here is a great gift for people. Look at this. Can you imagine giving this as a gift? Pillowcases. Isn't that wonderful? We're using the same paint we painted on the walls. Look at this, I've done it on a denim shirt. You can throw it in the washer, dryer, it's wonderful. And I even bleach the white ones. You don't want to do that with your denim, but I do it with the white. Now let me show you what we're going to do really quick. There's just a little bit of a difference here. And I'm going to have to pull out some berry wine really quick, right on this dirty palette here. But you're going to be able to see how fun it is with the white and the berry wine. I double loaded my brush. All right, now I'm going to base coat in an area. Say there and there. I'm just going to put a couple here so you can see. Pick that fresh paint and watch this. We're going up and over. Make a U. Make another U. And we're just laying on. Basically, we just picked up a little bit more white. And we're going to lay on these strokes. And then, now that flower is more solid. Now what we're going to do with the leaves, let's get rid of this brush here. What we're going to do with our leaves is that we're going to pick up our greens and we're going to come right around here. Got to work that paint in there. Look at this. Right on the fabric. Now let me tell you a little trick that you can do that really helps. You like to pre-wash. You pre-wash this and press it out and have it all ready for you to paint. Then I'm teaching you how to freehand paint so you really don't have to put patterns, but you can put patterns if you want to. All right, then what you want to do is you can take your iron and press this so that the paint fuses into the fabric and then, which is called heat setting, but look how wonderful and vivid those bright colors are. Now, I don't worry about a dry, uh, dry brush look. I think that's kind of fun too. Do you see that? Where it's kind of like a light airy look? Do that sometimes too. You'll enjoy it. Just play around with painting. And I started painting on fabric when my kids would get some spots or something and I wanted to really quickly like cover it up so that the, um, the nice little outfit wouldn't be ruined. So now let's go to another surface. I want to show you how to prepare a surface. This is what we've done. We've got a raw piece of wood and I have a sponge painter here and all we do with this sponge is we put on paint or you can put it on your foam plate and we smoothly put a nice coat. Now this is what we want to do. If I can hold this so it doesn't run around here. We want to take and sponge all our strokes one way. We want to base coat this totally, let it dry, and even put a second coat if we have bad streaks, okay? Let that totally dry. Then we're going to take a light piece of sandpaper, fine piece of sandpaper, or these wonderful blocks that are out there now. Take and lightly put a sanding on the totally dry base coated piece. All right? Make sure that you don't have dust off all that extra sanding. All right? And then... We're going to rebase coat. See, I've got a lot of paint still in my sponge. Rebase coat and put your second coat. All right, that's the first thing you're going to do to your surface to get it ready. Then you're going to paint your, your design. So the first, what I want to show you is how I took a fruit plaque. Let's move all of our goodies over here. I've got some antiquing medium, a dampened sponge, a soft white towel or like diapers. Not many people use diapers anymore that are cloth, but we can do that. And then we take, here's a piece all ready for us. This is after I, ba after I painted my fruit and I base coated it, painted my fruit, and then I antiqued over it. And I want to show you how I did this. All right, doesn't that look like an old, nice, antique looking piece? And it gives you that old roll effect, which is real popular now. Here's a piece I painted and I sealed it. 
I put either a, a varnish on it or a spray sealer on it. Then I'm going to take and put my antiquing medium with my dampened sponge, and it looks like I'm messing it up. Look at this. But it's going to be amazing how great this looks when we're all done. Look at this. Now, you can make this as dark or as light as you wish to make it. I have a flat plaque here that we've done that I want to show you. Okay. Now, I'm going to lay this down, and we're just going to come in here and wipe off here for you. Now, I might just wipe off really heavy in the middle and leave the edges darker. Look what that looks like. See this? Isn't that fun? I want to go over now and paint maybe some of those roses we were painting earlier on this topiary by picking up a brush and adding some green forest or thicket. We're using a lighter green here than a green forest. And then what we're going to do is we want some place to put the roses from. Well, of course, we could have a rose tree, but I'm going to have a vine coming here, like a wild rose vine. Remember how I was saying it was kind of fun to put a rose vine from here? I mean, a vine. Well, let me show you. We can make some ivy where we're pushing, wiggling, lifting. We're going to put our V. Remember, I was showing you the V earlier. Wiggling, lifting. All right, now we're going to paint the heart right in the middle here. Wiggle. Oops, my fingers slipped there. But remember, one stroke so easy because if you don't like something you've done, Pick up fresh paint, that's the key. Fresh paint and restroke over it. All right, then we're going to pull our stem right into there. Now, we're going to come in here and you can put some more leaves on here. And look what happens when you put a little rosebud in here. Right in here. Just like we were doing on the fabric, but see these little slashes here at the end? Let me show you one more time. Up and over, then we're going to do a U. And we're going to do a larger U, and then we're going to chisel on the edge, on the edge, on the edge. And I wouldn't have two going the same way. I'll just kind of put one over here. And it just gives a little bit of flair or interest to our little topiary. Then I'm going to come right in here, put a couple leaves down here on the bottom, and pull the stems into it. Be sure that you're always pulling your stem in as soon as you finish so it splits the paint and kind of puts that stem in there. It doesn't look like it's laying on top. Now, I could put some curls, little curly cues in there, but what I'm going to do is come up here one more time and review with you as, as I'm painting the leaf exactly, let's come way up here, exactly how I did the stroke again so that you get that movement that we're doing and how easy a leaf is if you do the simple steps that I'm going to show you. I want you to be able to see it. So what we want to do is go one, two, three. Watch the dark green edge of the brush and we want to see a seashell. See that seashell? We wiggle till we see the seashell. My handle of my brush is straight up and down. After I see the seashell, I stand up to the point. Same thing on the other side. One, two, three. Wiggle. See the seashell and stand up to the point. All right, pull our stem right into it, and that's exactly how that leaf happens. Now I'm going to show you really quickly how fun it is to do an e one side that's just half wiggle. Now watch this. We're going to push down, and we're going to slide to the tip. And this time, the light color went first, and then you pull your stem into it. Just like that. Now, all you do is go in there and continue filling up full of leaves, really simple leaves, if you do my little key steps. Painting has brought such joy into my life. I hope I've inspired you to pick up a paintbrush and invite the joy of one stroke painting into your life. everyone, I'm Jeff Mose along with Rhea Fiken and our special guest Donna Dewberry. Now this is our last break, so you only have a little bit of time left to support this public television station for bringing you this great Donna Dewberry special. And in a few minutes, we'll tell you how you can get some great thank you gifts so you can be painting in no time. 
We're sure that you've enjoyed the program. You take a little bit away from it. It's very exciting to think that you can do this yourself. But if you've enjoyed One Stroke Painting with Donna Dewberry and you want to see more wonderful programs like this in the future, you must now pick up your phone and give us your financial support. We always strive to bring you the best programming possible, but we really do need your support. You are the public in public television, and its future, its strong future, depends on great viewers like you. If you make a pledge of $150 today, well, we'll say thank you by sending you the ultimate Donna Dewberry Combo Kit. You will be well on your way to doing some wonderful painting like you've seen in the show. Now, this kit contains three, not one, but three one-stroke workshop videos, and these are 60 minutes each. It also includes a 32-page one-stroke workbook, a complete paint kit with brushes, three pattern sheets, a one brush that you saw used in this segment, and a reusable practice sheet. So make your call and make your pledge right now at the number on your screen. So now let's join Rhea Fiken and Donna Dewberry. Donna, I, I have to ask you something. Okay. I mean, this is our, our last time that we can talk to our viewers. We want them to call in and make pledges. If but we're having fun. Are you having fun? <laughs> I, know, I have to ask you something. Okay. This is a, a moment of truth. All right. If they get the ultimate combo kit, they make a pledge of $150, right. will they truly have everything they need to start immediately? Exactly. You open up your kit. It has all the lessons. Just imagine all those three-hour tapes have lesson after lesson after lesson. Right. Then you have the workbook, and you're doing each lesson with me and all the tools. Now, I mean, you can't beat that. Walk through your store and try to find all the tools that you need. I mean, I wouldn't even know if I wasn't a painter. Right. So what I've got here for you are four brushes that I've designed. They're my brushes that I made for you so you can do one-stroke painting with. How sponges. long will those brushes last? Oh, as long as you take care of them. Okay. <laughs> okay, then we have sponges. I die-cut these sponges. I didn't personally do them. I designed <laughs> these so you put your hand on this side of the sponge and not get all the paint on you, and it gives you a hard edge. Uh -huh. And you saw me making the right. trees and other things with this. And everything you need, all the tools, the patterns. I, yeah, I don't encourage you to use patterns, but I have them there for you. Everything. So yeah. you really can make your pledge of $150, and you can get started right away. This is the last opportunity for you to call in and make a pledge, the last opportunity to show your appreciation for this great new program. And, and give a gift to somebody else. And you know what? I have people every day of my life, it's such a blessing, that write me and tell me, call me, tell me how they're handy. Cap. They've had terrible accidents. They have all kinds of reasons why they're depressed or they can't paint or because they can't, don't have fine motor skills anymore. But you know what? With one stroke painting, you can do it without fine motor skills. You can literally sit here and use your fingers, use your whole arm, or you put your whole body into it. And I really show you how to do that so that it's easy for anybody to do it. And the only steps that you have to do are three. You have to put lots of paint. I give you lots of paint, 16 colors. Then you have to load that brush with lots of paint. Then you have to hold the brush straight up and down. And then all you have to do is push Hello. with pressure. That's it. And you know what? I give you the tools right at home. And you can practice, practice this practice before you practice. even get on. That's right. Now, wait a minute. Suppose somebody has a watering can or some, a, a mailbox, mailbox and That's you right. want to decorate it. Can you use this to do Absolutely. that? Absolutely. And all you do is I tell you, I tell you in the videos how to seal them, how to protect them. But most things, you don't even have to do that. You can paint from a canvas to your walls. You saw me paint on fabric, and it's so much fun. And you know what? I would go around my house and say, I want to spruce my house up for a while. <laughs> I don't want something new in here. My husband would always come home and say, what's new today? <laughs> right. So, listen, this is just absolutely great, but because this is our last break we want you to be able to find out about our other special gifts that you get when you make pledges so let's go to Jeff right now thank you very much Rhea you know in addition to the thank you gifts at the hundred and fifty dollar pledge level that Rhea and Donna just told you about we also have a thank you gift with a ninety dollar pledge we'll say thank you by sending you Donna Dewberry's one stroke combo now this kit contains the one brush stroke basics video it's 30 minutes in length the Basic Stroke Workbook, the outstanding, great workbook that you just saw that, that Donna's been working through. Now, there's 36 pages in that with a variety of different strokes and techniques uh, that you can use. There's also included in that kit one Rosebud Reusable Teaching Guide and a paint kit. Or how about this? A pledge of $75 will say thank you by sending you Donna's One Stroke Basics Video and Teaching Guide. Now, this kit contains a one 
brush stroke basics video, 30 minutes again in length, and one Rosebud reusable teaching guide and instructions. And that teaching guide is so valuable and so easy to use. Now we have volunteers in our studios who are ready to take your pledge and turn your viewership into membership. So please call us now and welcome Donna Dewberry into the public television family with your financial pledge of support. Please give us a call now. You can use your credit card or you can send a check, but please know that you'll be helping to support the great programming here on public television. Now let's go back to Rhea and Donna. This is really exciting. The phones are very, very busy, but we still have room for you to call. This is your last opportunity to call in and support Donna Dewberry's wonderful new program that we have right here on public television. We are getting calls, Donna, from people from all over, old, young, all kinds of people who are interested in what you're doing, and you have made all of us feel like anybody can do it. That's right, and you know what's so fun about it is that young, old, men, women, everybody can do it. And the best thing is we'll sit on Monday night and do family night together. And when, as my kids were growing up and we would have fun or we'd have birthday parties and everybody would paint. I mean, it was just a good thing. Get my neighbors, they would all come to my house. We'd let all of our kids play and we would paint. So you know what? Painting's fun. It's like having something you love as a hobby and you know what? You can turn it into making money. Just like I said before, and a great gift. Just think to be able to make your gifts. I would have to do clay pots because my, they, was, they were very inexpensive, right. and I have seven children with teachers at the holidays, and I would have to, or end of the year, and they'd say, Mom, my teacher, I have to have a gift for my teacher. The teachers got smart, though. They said they wanted a dewberry. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I would have, in Florida, we have seven. Uh, these, all these kids have at least five teachers, so we would have to go and make all these presents. And I literally would, literally would be with a blow dryer at the front door, blowing the oh, clay pots, so that story. they'd be ready as they ran out the door. So just think, wouldn't you like to find a hobby, have something that you didn't know, a talent that you didn't know you had? And you know what? Within a few hours, people literally tell me within hours they're doing something that will amaze you if you just practice a little bit. I think there's can you imagine that? One drawback. I can what? imagine getting started with this. I would not want to do the housework. I would not want to cook. I would oh, not I never want did to do that. It. I just want to paint. Fifteen minutes before my husband would come in the door, I'd <laughs> run around the house and I said, "Kids, help, help, help." <laughs> okay, we do want to remind you again that when you make a pledge at the one hundred fifty dollar level, it is our pleasure to send you Donna. Dewberry's One Stroke Ultimate Combo, and the kit has three One Stroke Workshop videos, 60 minutes each, a 32-page One Stroke Workbook, and that is a great workbook, believe me. It will tell you everything you need to know. You get a complete paint kit with brushes, with three pattern sheets, with a One Stroke Scruffy Brush, and reusable practice sheets. You also get the sponges that we talked about everything you absolutely need in order to begin painting. We also have a gift for you at the $90 level, and that is Donna Dewberry's One My Stroke Combo. This, yeah. this is, kit has a One Stroke basic video. It's 30 minutes long. It has the basic stroke workbook that's 36 pages, one rosebud reusable teaching guide, and a paint kit. And at the $75 level, Donna Dewberry's one stroke basic video and teaching guide. The kit contains a one brush stroke basics video, 30 minutes long, a one rosebud reusable teaching guide and instructions. It is all there for you. We hope that you will call. Our volunteers are going to stay here to take your calls. And Donna, I can't tell you what a pleasure and well, an excitement it has to have you here with us and today. And you know what? I'd like to share one last thing with you. I want to make sure that everybody knows that in all my videos, I act like you're, I pretend that you know nothing about painting. So if you're a seasoned painter, you're going to love it. Or if you've just started painting for the first time, you're going to love it. Donna. Thank, thank you, you. You're so wonderful. much. Right. And thank all of you who have called in. Please keep calling. We want to hear from you. And enjoy painting. Have fun. Expand your mind with Orange County Public Television. KOCE. I'm Don Taylor Short from Taylor's Maid Right in Marshalltown, Iowa. We make a finely ground Maid Right sandwich 
We've been making them for 75 years. We're going to be part of a program called Sandwiches That You Will Like. Tune in. Tonight at 8 on KOCE. Coming to America, it has been the dream of millions since this country began. And if this is not heaven, so help me God. It was a building and budding America. It was the new world. It was going from sea to shining sea. And I did this glorious, glamorous American life. Saturday at 9.30 on KOCE. The Smothers Brothers, the Kingston Trio, the Highwaymen, the Brothers Four, Glenn Yarbrough, the Limelighters, Roger McGuinn, Barry McGuire, Randy Sparks and the Minstrels unite for history in a special celebration of American folk music, next on PBS. This program is part of the American Soundtrack Concert Series. Your music on PBS. Made possible by PBS viewers like you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, from the campus of Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, please welcome Judy Collins.
wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Tonight on PBS, you're going to see both sides of the story of American folk music. I want to thank PBS and all the stations that show this show. You know, we love PBS, and uh, I don't know what I would do without it. So support it and watch us and listen to this story tonight. Music from its roots in bluegrass and coffee houses and clubs in Greenwich Village through the evolution of folk music into a vital part of Americans' popular musical heritage. I'm very proud to be a part of this special gathering and to be able to introduce to you some old friends of mine. Please welcome Tom and Dick Smothers, the Smothers Brothers. I love them. I love them. Thank you so much. We, we have known Judy for so long. We uh, first met her in, uh, in 1960. It's been 40, it was 42 years now. We've Our known each other. Our very first duet job yes, in Aspen, right. Colorado. In Aspen, the limelight. At the limelight. We were just, uh, just wonderful there, and I loved you there, and I love you now. So, so were you. We, who knew? Who knew who where was. the time would go? And you yeah. sound better Thank than ever. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank Judy you. Collins. She's fantastic. Thank you, guys. Keep coming back. Judy Collins. You know, our musical journey begins uh, in uh, this next week's musical journey began in San Francisco, uh, and they were the first folk group that really made the record, I mean, radio play was huge with this group. Well, I mean, th th listen, there, there had been some hit folk songs prior to these guys. The early fish, you remember the Weavers? Yeah. Uh, Good Night Irene and, and, and that. Uh, but you know what? Pete Seeger and the bunch, they were fantastic, but it didn't catch on with the young folk. It took this group to open the door to the college because they were all college kids in the mid-50s mid out of San Francisco. In fact, it's, they, they had a big break and at the same club that Tommy and I opened at in San Francisco called the Purple Onion, a little basement bistro across the street from the Hungry Eye. These Island. guys now are well into their 80s or 90s. These are old. They're, they're amazing. Old. No, they're not quite that old, Tom. Well, well, they, no, 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 they're not that old. <laughs> What are you they, they certainly look it and they lived it. Uh, <laughs> they One of them lived passed away and came back three times. Yeah. <laughs> but the, with, I, I, quite honestly, I, without uh, the success of this this trio, uh, there never the show business would have been different. The musical business would have been vastly different. They opened the door for us, the Limelighters, Peter Paul and Mary, folk folk rock, everything. We else. wouldn't be around if we it wasn't for this. We group. would have been around, but we wouldn't have been doing this. <laughs> Probably, ladies and gentlemen, meet the Kingston Trio. We expect you to sing along with this one. Throughout history, there have been many songs written about the Eternal Triangle. This next song tells the story of a Mr. Grayson, a beautiful woman, and a condemned man named Tom Dooley. When the sun rises tomorrow, Tom Dooley must hang. Hang out your head, Tom Dooley. Hang out your head and cry. And did the little buds. And then look back here at our aster. With the aster, brighter colors, layered petals. This is a little clock, and we even add some butterflies. And those are just those little strokes that we just do with our flowers. And look right here, marigolds. A flower garden tote. You can fill it full of magazines, or you can even take and fill it with your garden supplies. And then I put some of the ferns down the side just to really accent it and make it really nice. And just think. These are great objects that you can paint. Remember what I'm telling you when we're saying, get a greeting card, get a birthday card, anniversary. I had so many people in my gift shop that would say, I, you know, husbands would come in and say, paint the flower for my wife's birthday. 
And what we're doing is we're showing you month by month what the flower would be. The season makes a big mid combo collection of gifts from Donna. All that you need to have in order for you to master the one stroke technique. You'll receive the 16 page workbook and each month has a different flower. Partnership between the public television stations, between you as a producer and between our viewers as well. And we need for you viewers to do your part by calling this public television at their in their own comfort of their own home. That's right. And so what we want you to do today is to place a value on that. Think about all the enjoyment that you're going to get out of one-stroke painting and everything you're learning from Donna here today. Put a value on that and then... Welcome back. I'm Donna Dewberry. Today we're learning to paint flowers for every month of the year. There's no better way to brighten a dreary January day than with a beautiful bouquet of carnations. I took a piece of my grandmother's tenware that she had from years ago and I painted carnations on it. Look how beautiful that is. Just a stuff full of flowers that hang on your wall. I want to show you how to paint these strokes and they're very simple it's one stroke painting simple strokes blending shading and highlighting as you go you don't have to know where the highlight or the shading is you just have to paint the strokes as i teach you what we're going to do is we're going to load our flat brushes and we're going to put a couple colors on each brush and we're going to use more than one this time we're going to be all ready to go here we're going to dampen our brush first let me get a paper towel so I can show you. We're going to put our brush in water. We're going to lay it on the paper towel, get the excess water out of it, but it's still dampened, okay? Then we're going to uh, start adding some colors that we want in our carnation. So let's come over here and look at my worksheet. I'm going to put plastic on top of the worksheet, and we're going to use the red and white first. And then I'm going to show you some other variations, some other colors that you can use. But if you put your clear plastic on top of my worksheet, let's turn it over this way so we don't have the writing there. And then we can show you how to do those strokes. Now, it's as simple as how we load the brush. Now, loading the brush is the most important part of my technique. So we're going to pick up two colors of paint. And I'm going to go next to this paint right here. This is acrylic paint water-based acrylic. Lots of people ask because it looks like oil paint. It's so rich and creamy, okay? Now, and it just cleans up with water, so the best part of that is there's no smell. All right? Now, the key is we've got to push this brush really hard, all right, and get the paint two-thirds up the bristles, all right? Now, we've got all this paint on the brush, at least two-thirds up, and we're ready to paint. So we're going to start here. I'm going to start on this side, and my eyes should be watching the outer edge of this stroke. See right here? I'm going to slide up, watching the red. See that? Now I want to make sure that I definitely see a crisp white, because you know how carnations have this beautiful white, and then just the rippled edges have some color sometimes. Okay, and then you slide back down. You want to make sure you don't have a big, huge gap there. You want to make sure you have plenty of paint. Now, when I practice on this plastic, this will remind you of how it's going to feel if you paint on glass or metal. It's really slick, and you have to kind of lay the paint on here. All right, because normally I tell you put a lot of pressure. Pushing, lifting, starting and ending on this chisel edge. See this edge right here of the brush? Right here. The edge that's touching is the chisel, okay? So we're going to start our strokes on that edge and end. So in between, watch this. We start, we're going to push down, we're going to wiggle, and then we stand back up on that chisel and we slide down. Just that easy. And it's how you're pushing and how you're pulling that makes the pedal, even sometimes it makes the pedal look like it turns. Let's come over here again. We're going to come here. Do those strokes and look at this. I'm going to even kind of turn it a little bit and see by doing that it makes the pedal look like it, it turns to the side a little bit. Now, I don't even have to clean this brush to come in here and pick up some yellow on the white edge. Okay, we just picked up a little bit of yellow and then I'm going to work in so I have a little bit of red on the outer edge. All right, and then I want you to see how pretty this looks just by changing the color a little bit.
Now, you can have lots of fun. You can put some white little rippled edges on the outer edge or bright colors. So just like carnations that you see in the florist and decide what you want your carnation to look like. I have a lot of sororities that say that they have carnations for their mass, for their uh, symbol of their their sorority, and they've always had me come and paint things for them. They make a beautiful painted wreath, too. So, let's practice some of these flowers and show you, now that we practiced it, you wipe off the plastic and you start painting your flower. All right? So, what we're going to do is I'm going to do the white and red again, loading my brush. Let's get this brush all loaded again. Okay? And you're going to notice every time I move away, remember, I'm picking up paint. All right? There's your first stroke. Now, I have some floating medium that I would use instead of water, but I'll show you when we need the floating medium, and we really don't need it when we're doing these smaller brush, when we're using the number 12 or smaller. We just need lots of paint. So every time I come over, see, I can go over a stroke I don't like. See if it's dry edges. Let me show you again. I'm going to come here and see. I might not need white every time. I might just need to come over here and stroke a little bit of red. Okay? Now, I want this flower, these outer edges, knowing that this outer skirt's what I'm going to see most in this flower. All right, come around. And I want it to come down a little bit. Make sure you go over stroke if you don't like it. Whenever you go over stroke, make sure you have fresh paint. All right, there you go. Now, we're going to pick up and do more paint fresh, white, and red this time, and I'm going to do a second layer. Now, the key to the second layer is you want to be able to see that it's a second layer. You want to be able to see the white underneath so that these red tips show. And you know, some carnations are really jagged. See this? You see how that's happening? Watch this. See, see I just really make it more of a wiggle there so it's real rippled. All right, and I continue putting the layers. There you go, all the way around. And the fun part of learning how to paint is I love sitting at my dining room table and just playing with these flowers. And I call it playing because it's like fun to see what you can create using the different strokes and looking at the flower I want to create. So, if you have live carnations or a picture of a carnation, like my worksheet here, you can just go from there. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to make a base. See how that is? I scoop down and slide back up. Now, my eyes are watching the dark green that time. Then I'm going to come right in here, and I'm going to go, just like I was doing before, and ripple the green edge and pull down. Let's do it over here. You ripple up. And this, see how you want to grab that blossom and pull it down. And you can come back and touch up this, pull some of those strokes down into the stem, into the base, I mean, and before we put the stem. Now watch the stem. We're going to grab it and pull it down. Now that's where you might need some floating medium. Let me show you. I'm going to dip into the gel, the floating medium, work it in. Okay, and then you can actually even go back on it. But see my little finger? I'm pulling down from there, down, following my little fingers, following the movement, so I'm steady. Now then, let me show you these leaves on the carnation are longer, skinnier, just on the chisel edge. Now watch this. I, I don't push down straight and pull like that, which it might look okay, but it even looks better when you slightly tilt it. Watch this. I slightly tilt it, push a little bit, and then stand up on the chisel, which means you have to have these good synthetic nylon bristles because they pop back up for you. Now watch this one. You push, turn the brush in your fingers, and roll down. Now <laughs> let's try that again. That's kind of tricky. I'm going to need my floating medium. Lots of paint. Work that in. And it's kind of goopy if you're not careful. See? I've got a lot of paint on there. And that's because... I've got that floating medium on the smaller brush. Now see, I'm going to slide up, push down. Now watch me roll the brush in my fingers and then slide down, okay? Now you have to play with that a little bit until it's comfortable, but that's actually how you make a ribbon too, okay? Just like that. Now, if I don't have a really good stroke, you can go over it. 
but you don't want, if you go over it too much, you'll make it muddy, and we don't want to. Now, there's our carnation. That's our January flower. So, let's put this to the side, and let's do the lily of the valley. Now, these are May. What's great about this is think about the weddings that you can paint little um, cards like invitations, or you can put a few little flowers. I used to put them on party favors, like little clay pots. They're lots of fun. All right, now, this little, um, this little cap right here is kind of like the base of the carnation. Now, we're going to pick up white and blue, and pick whatever blue. You could use a soft blue. I'm using a brighter blue. All right. I'm going to take the small brush again, two-thirds up. Now, I'm going to do it not half and half. I'm doing it mostly white and a little bit of blue. Okay, that's kind of what we were doing on the carnation also. Now, I'm going to take and make my cap. And you know what? What I found that's easier is to take the script liner. Let's go over here. Let me show you this. We're going to dip into the water, and we're going to make circles right here. Okay, dip into water, make circles right here. And this is what we do with the script liner. This liner is great because it's got longer bristles, and there's a lot of bristles there, actually, but at the tip, it's really fine. So it holds a lot of paint because this is what happens. I would paint these and realize, man, I should have put the stem first because it would have been easier. So I'm going to come down with a stem. And what happens is that these cross over and touch cross over and touch, just like that, pick up more paint, cross over, and see my little fingers holding me up so it steadies me. I have to be careful if I'm going back over it. See that? There we go. All right, now, see, now that's how they're going to hang off of the stem. Then you come in and you do this part all the way down. And sometimes I progressively get smaller. Let's make these a little bit bigger. So the, the one at the end is smaller, the one up here. OK? There we go. Now, what we're going to do is I always put the back skirt first and the back ruff, the ruffle right here. So we're going to come back here. And it's more of a little point a little bit than a ruffle. And then we come right in front. And this is the key. We're going to, oops, I got green on there. Let's wipe that off. Let me show you how easy it is. We don't have any mistakes because they're easy to fix. We just pick up more paint, and we go right back over that again, and we pick up more white, and we're ready to do the front skirt again. Okay, we come right there, and we want to make sure that we pull it back up. Now, we can pull this and pull it into the top there, and then shade it again a little bit, and there we go. Now, they're really simple, but the key to making them really look like something is this, this first little skirt right here. See? I need more paint all along there. All right. Now, let me show you. We're going to do the Jackal, the Jonquil, and the Nar Narcissus. <laughs> That's a really easy one to say, isn't it? Okay, I want to show you that these petals are just alike, but it's different color variations, and it's going to remind you of this little stroke that we just did, okay? Because what we're going to do is we're going to take the yellow. Let's, let's clean out that brush. And the outside edge is what we're going to concentrate on. Now, over here with the John Cole, we're going to use, that's our March flower. Remember, you always run out to see if those bulbs have popped out of the ground. Well, this way you can paint them right there in your house, and you'll always have them while you're waiting. Okay, now watch this stroke. You're going to pick up paint. You're going to push to the tip, push, come down. Now, I lost my paint there. I don't need floating medium. I just need to have fresh paint on there, okay? Now, if you watch what I'm doing, I'm pushing, coming to the chisel. Push down, slide down. Remember, the chisel is just the bristle tips of your brush. And the key is that we've got to be able to push and push down. You've got to lift up to the point there. Now, I usually don't make anything dry before I do the next stroke, but on that one, I would because I'm going to put that orange center. See this orange center? We're going to put that orange center right on top. So, let's go to the Narcissus. And let's show you with that one, we're going to pick up some white. 
on one side, and mostly white on those petals. But it's the same stroke. But what I'm going to do on this one is, let's say, I'm going to go up, down, up, down. See how simple that stroke is? Now, I did this three strokes without picking up paint because I had plenty of paint on there. But what I want you to see is let's get some layers here, okay? Let's come up here. Let's come down. See that? Now, this is the key. Now, I would come in here right now, all right, as I'm designing this flower, and I would pull the stem right out of the center because I want to put this petal on top of it. All right, I want to come right here so it looks like it's inside the flower. All right, and it's easier to do it that way. Now let's do the center of this flower, and it's red. Okay, so I'm gonna take, work in my orange and red into my brush. All right, now I'm gonna come right here and attach it to the flower. See how easy that was? Just right along here, make that rippled edge. Now then I concentrated on the outer edge. Now remember, this is just like your lily of the valley, okay? But that's the back petal. But to give it some depth so you can see the inside, you want to be able to put a front petal on there so that you can see some depth in there. And you're going to have to work on making it really show in there. Now, let me show you the center of this other flower, the jonquil. And what we're doing on it is we're going to take and do that same base that I told, showed you before with the lily of the valley. All right. Now, on this flower, I'm going to take some of this off. and mostly have yellow and orange so we can see a contrast. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right on top. Now, see, I don't really see a lot of contrast there, so maybe I ought to pick up a little bit of red so you can really see... See, I come up, push up, push up. Watch this. Up, up, up. That's the movement you want to be doing. And then, all right, and then we want to come right here and go around. And then all you have to do, you can clean it up. I go back sometimes to clean it up and have a steadier hand than I have there. And then really, every little thing that you add adds a little bit of depth. It. See, I'm going to come in there and make a little scoop in there. Now, see how much depth that just gave it? Just that little bit. Now, you can use your script liner, and you can come in there, and you can pull little stamens out of there if you want to. Just a little bit of shading in there. Maybe it's not stamens. Maybe it's just a little bit of shading, but see how you can use the script liner to pull in there? Just a little bit, and any bit that you do like that gives it more depth. Let me show you the greenery on these. And they're really simple. They're kind of like some flowers I taught you earlier. They're really simple. Now we're going to put floating medium and work it in. Okay. Now, now what I like to do is you see how this bends and comes down? Let's move these all out of the way. And that's what's going to make it look really natural is every time you get the opportunity to come down and make it bend like this to the side. And I use the larger brush, believe it or not, instead of the script liner, because look at all the shading that I get as I'm doing this. And then all these leaves are just like this. Okay, long fronds. And that's the easiest way to make that happen, because if you go like this, you're going to have points, and they really don't have points. They're really pretty rounded, okay? So you could do it like I just showed you there, or you can just touch, lean towards the yellow, which is the lighter color, and pull down. And you have all those pretty streaks. Just, just that easy. And you see how all those flowers help you paint the other flower? All those little strokes, you kind of build the strokes, and you're able to accomplish every flower that you want to paint all year round. So let's come over here and look at a couple of my surfaces that I chose to paint on this time. I put some of my flowers right on a picture frame. Picture frames are great because you can personalize it. You can put somebody's wedding invitation in there. You can put the bride in there. And I put my Maria in there. Isn't that pretty? And you can put the little leaves and the flowers just perking, perked around it. But look at this butterfly house. These wood surfaces, you'll see how I did some faux finishing. This is a butterfly house. We put a few little butterflies. And don't forget to put a little bit on the back always. It makes it such a fun little treat to turn around a piece and see that. 
and that makes a fun little porch piece, or you can actually use it as a butterfly house. And watering cans. I made a lot of gifts in my lifetime out of watering cans because you know what? Lots of people love to garden, and if they don't have, um, if they don't use it actually to water with, they can always plant a plant in it and have fun with it. But I want you to see that this is an enamel finish. And remember when I'm painting on pla plastic, and how I said that you have to be careful in how much paint you put in there. Okay? Come back and join me. We're going to have lots more fun painting more flowers. For lefty, Aunt, since I'm standing on the left I side. Am a lefty. Oh, you are. So this is good. <laughs> Instead of starting here where it says start, you would start where it says end, so that you're not crossing on top of your on top of your paint. Okay. And then oh, when wow. you're doing leaves, I want the lefties to turn the leaf towards their body uh -huh. instead of to the right like the righties would do. Mm. Okay. So look at the beautiful shading here. This is absolutely. For a first-time painter, if you think you can't even do a stick figure, I promise you, you can do that. And you see what I'm doing? I'm standing the brush straight up and down. I'm putting pressure. I'm wiggling. Mm -hmm. See that? So easy. And I'm lifting. You wipe it off, and you move it to see if it's looking like my strokes, and then you practice again. Donna has made it easy, and so have we made it easy for you to call in with your pledge of support. Here's Dolores to tell us a little bit more about those special thank you gifts. Thanks, Janet. This is absolutely for a beginner, and every single workbook I have, every single video, I pretend that you've never picked up a brush before in your life, and you start painting with me stroke by stroke, very simple strokes. You're loading this brush, lots of paint. You're coming on top of here, practicing one stroke at a time. And I want you to know, if you don't have fine motor skills, there's lots of people that have written to me and told me that they, they can't hold the brush like that. You can literally hold the brush any way that you can possibly grasp that brush and look at this all you're doing is doing the movement and you can still do it you don't have to be able to do that fine motor skill if you've got somebody who's been in an accident who's housebound and they need something so they don't think about their woes how many of us do that we need something and this this is something that enriches people's lives because they do something beautiful. They can share a gift with somebody that they paint it or share the, the, the gift that they're helping the local station with right and, here. And again, you mentioned enriching people's lives. That's exactly what the phone's ringing. Let's us know that you are involved with public television and to share your method of painting with our viewers. You know what? I was a mom at home with those seven children and I wanted to learn how to paint so bad and I had no feasible way financially or time wise to go take a that rose stroke i'm making all sorts of flowers like like and you can take what i'm teaching you in this video and create any flower in your garden like gladiolas and sweet peas and pansy i mean what we're teaching you stroke by stroke in this video Roses are red, violet, and I'm going to go right between the two colors here. Okay, get that brush two-thirds loaded. One of the most important things of the one-stroke technique is loading the brush two-thirds full. Then what we're going to do is practice a few minutes on my worksheet and get comfortable with doing this movement. And I put the clear plastic on there so you can wipe it off and practice again. And we're going to start here where it says start and come around to where it says in. I'm going to do it reverse here, which is what a lefty would do, okay? I would start here where it says in, and then push, and then let the bristle stand up and slide back. All right, let's do it again. More paint. We're going to go push, lift, chisel, push, lift. Now see, if I don't like my stroke, I just go over it again. Now this is your chisel edge right here. So whenever we're on the chisel, we're going to end and we're going to begin and end each stroke on that chisel. So the key is, is as we're practicing this, we want to come around and come around and and what I want to do is see the stroke here, right here. There we go. So you're going to practice till it looks like this, and you can actually flip the brush occasionally and try different colors. All right. Now to practice this leaf, we're going to pick up two colors. I'm going to use a larger brush now. This is a three-quarter inch flat. And I like flat brushes because what happens with flat brushes is that you see all the blending and shading of all the colors you put on the brush at one time. And so what we're going to do, 
Let's turn it this way a little bit so you can see. Here's your heart. Can you see the heart? We're going to start on this line. We're going to go one, two, three. Now the brush handle straight up and down. We put pressure. One, two, three. Gets the bristles and the shading all like you want them. Then we're wiggling, following my movement. But my eyes are watching that darker green edge because then I want to slide up. All right. Now one, two, three. Now as you're wiggling, you're keeping this yellow right here. You're pivoting that and it's staying in the middle. See that? You wiggle around and then you let the brush stand up to the chisel. And then all you have to do is pull your stem right in the middle. Now, you've blended, shaded, and highlighted in one stroke by putting all that color on your brush at one time. Now, that's the key. That's what makes it so beautiful that it's that simple. Starting on the line, push, wiggling. There we go. All right. Now, some flowers, some of the petals are more loopy. Some of the leaves, I mean, are more loopy, more dramatic. So you can do whatever the stroke is by watching that outer edge. Okay, practice this again. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put the greenery. I don't always do the greenery first, but I am on this flower. And I'll show you why. What we want to do, we want to work our yellow and our green. Now I want some floating medium. I've got this gel right here. It's the fluff. That's inside paint with no pigment. So I use that instead of water, okay? Now, I'm gonna make a plant. And to make a plant, the key is, is to have these stems that are curved like the blossoms up here, curving down. But see, I want it all to come to one spot where the plant is, where it grows in the ground, okay? Now this is a February flower. And violets are so pretty on little antique pieces. They look really nice on invitations. Pretty little, and I just like learning this blossom itself because you can actually do a hydrangea and some other flowers from learning this blossom. Okay, and see the wiggling here? I want you to notice what I'm going to do. Every time I leave from my painting area here, I've gone to get paint. So concentrate on how often I leave and how often I do that. Now see, I want the seashell. See that seashell? I want this whole seashell with the yellow pivoting, and then I let the bristles rise to the chisel. Then I pull the stem into it. Now you can come back and put a few little uh, smaller leaves too later if you wish, but that's how I start. Now I'm going to pick up two colors. I'm going to reload this brush some more. It's the number 12, a smaller brush. You can pick out whatever size flat brush you want to use to get that color and to get the size of the flower violet that you want to paint. And just look at violets. There's some that have little ruffled leaf, uh, petals and some that are smooth. This is the traditional one that you see for birthday flowers. Okay? Now what's fun is to think that you can pick up any birthday month that one of your friends have and you can paint them a little gift and make it even more personal by saying, I painted this just for you with your own birthday month, you know, the own flower for that month. There we go. Here's a little bud. All right. Real simple. And it's as easy as picking up a bright yellow on the tip of your brush, um, the handle of your brush. Dip. There you go. With my seven children, I wanted to learn how to paint really bad. So I would sit at my dining room table and figure out how to paint all these little flowers that I wanted to paint. And this gave me a great opportunity to come up with more flowers. A few of these flowers I've painted before, and some of them I just created just for you so that you could have a flower for every month. Okay, so we continue around filling in all those flowers, doing the same thing. We're dotting, just ever so lightly dotting the center. And you want it to be a really bright yellow so it pops in the center of that flower, okay? Now, I want to show you the sweet pea. The sweet pea is really fun because you can use all kinds of pretty colors too. You can use blues and pinks. And I've got this one right here. It's just another shade of purple here. But I'm going to take maybe put some berry wine and mix it up with my purple so I have a really deep but rich pretty color there. All right. I put a little bit of floating medium because this paper that I'm working on is dry. Sometimes if you're not on paper, you won't have that same difficulty. Same thing here. 
is that we do a rippled edge. And like I told you, there's some, um, some other flowers that instead of smooth, some violets have a rippled edge like this. So that kind of, I put these flowers together so you could see if you chose to do a violet that's rippled instead. All right, now, now I want to be careful not to get muddy because what I'm doing is I'm coming back on top with more layers. And that's the beauty of this little flower is that they're really ruffled. And to be able to see it and tell that they're each individual petals, you need to make sure you put pressure. Now look what happens if I don't. If I ruffle like that, that's, that's meaning that I'm not putting pressure. Now it might look okay to you, because lots of people when I show about something, I said, now you don't want it this way. Lots of people say, oh, I think that was pretty too, Donna. All right, see, you can't hardly see the difference in the layers as well as if you were to do this. And that's just putting more pressure. See, I push, I stay down as I'm ruffling this. And then watch what happens when I put the next layer right on top. Let's see, I got a little bit too much white in that one. Okay, just like this. Go over anything you don't like. Slide up. Now, a few of these strokes right here that I used, I just chiseled up. Leading with a lighter color, push, lean, lift. And I'm lifting as I'm pulling, okay? Now, it's the same big leaf as we did before, but I'm going to use a small brush to show you how I would attach this blossom okay what we're going to do is we're going to just grab short little strokes touching pulling see this grab those little strokes and then pull them down all right and the same thing i'd like to share with you on these is i like to make some of them curve but i'm going to do my blossom before i put the stem on this because i'm going to add this right here and if you can help not having to go back and do the work twice it's always easier i mean better because it's not, it's not taking as long. And now what makes these look so pretty, let me put this back here so you can see real quick. What makes it look so pretty is this curly cue. Let me get my script liner and show you how to do that really quick. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the water three times and right next to my puddle, I dip three times at least and I want a nice inky puddle. Now inky is not thick and it's not pasty, it's not watery. Okay, you roll the brush, and you can roll it and pull from here and see if it's an inky. You can definitely tell if it's, it's watery if you do it that way. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move our whole arm as we do the stroke, okay? So we're going to put our little finger there, start making a circle. And see, this is all dry paper, and you can go on and on and on because my bristles are long enough to hold all that water and inky, inky paint, okay? All right, now that makes it really fun and really brings a lot to that flower because it has all those little tendrils on there. Now, what we're gonna do is one of my other favorite flowers is a rose. Rose is so much fun and I've shown you a couple strokes already that's gonna help you build this rose. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a dampened brush. I'm gonna load it with um, berry wine, wicker white. I'm going to go right between these two colors because you're going to see I'm going to come pick up paint quite often. Okay, back and forth, lots of paint. Now because I'm on my dry surface, I might go into a little bit of floating medium. Oops, that has some green for my leaves. Let's go to this clean one over here. Okay, now we're going to paint the skirt first. Let's do it right over here. We're going to go one, two, three, and we're going to wiggle and do a seashell. That's the key. You've got to practice this stroke till you feel really comfortable on my worksheet with that stroke. Or, or this is all you're doing. One, two, three, and you're wiggling and making a fan shape. See that? Now, one stroke painting, remember? Blending, shading, highlighting. I want to see the shades here. I want to see the white all the way to the darker burgundy there. And you can see I'm getting a little pinky, so I want to make sure that I pick up some fresh white. Now. See that stroke? Let me show you again. Two lines, we go up and over. 
we go from line to line, we make a U. That's going to be the center of your flower. Then from that same line, one, two, three, we're going to wiggle and put the second layer of petals. Same thing with the sweet pea. You've got to make sure that you can see this layer from the next layer. And I'm almost lost it there, so I've got to make sure I pick up plenty of white. All right, all the way around. Now we want to come in to finish this flower. And a rose is usually one of the most difficult flowers. I'm going to clean this up. And, but with my technique, it's one of the easiest flowers you learn. Very simple strokes. And you build one stroke on top of another stroke, and before you're done, voila, you have a rose. Look at that. Just that simple. Now, I have fun doing those, and I just have gone crazy with roses. I put them on everything, and they're just one of the people's favorite flowers, uh, you know, nationwide as a rose. And so, look at this. I've gotten to where I can use this big brush and put a rose on clay pots, put rosebuds, only if you just do rosebuds, just think how much fun those would be. I'm going to do a half of a rose here. Just that quick, you can paint half of a rose here, and then we put a leaf on top of it, all right? Now, when I'm doing the rosebud, instead of just going up and over and doing a U, I do another U and maybe even another piece so that we have a pretty little bud there, all right? Now, I'm going to go pick up the green and show you really quickly how I did a calyx. You touch, lean, lift as we go around. Let me do it again. Touch, lean towards the yellow on the brush, and you lift, and then push, lift in the middle. Touch, lean, pull away. There we go. Just that simple. And there's a little leaf here. Push, turn, lift. Push, turn, lift. And we can have little one-stroke leaves. Okay? Now, we're going to paint a gardenia. And a gardenia, I was kind of intimidated by painting one, but I found out that after, after I took it, I want you to think of one stroke at a time, and I want you to look at that whole, whole rose and think that it's difficult. I want you to look at one stroke at a time. I'm calling it a gardenia. It's a gladiola. It's an August gladiola, okay? Let's see. There we go. We're going to pick up yellow and orange, and this is what we're going to do. I really need floating medium on this one because what I'm going to do is I'm going to wiggle up, reverse direction and wiggle down but I want my paint to really cover over here so see right on this side I need it more so you wiggle up reverse direction and wiggle down and when I ver reverse direction I'm reversing direction of the bristles I'm leaning one way then I lean them back the other way and then I come back and see just a little bit of curve wiggle over and this little curve right there turns the petal a little bit. And it makes it look really fun. It makes it look like you worked hard and you really didn't. All right, there we go again. Down, wiggle back. Wiggle down, wiggle back. I'm running out of space there. Okay, now right here, this big one. I really wanted a lot of yellow, a little bit of orange right here. Really, you can stop really putting pressure here, and then you can come down and do this side. Either way, I've done it in one stroke, and come back up, or you can do two separate strokes. Now, I'm going to come back in with just a little bit of red, because I've lost that layer. See how easy it is? You can put more yellow, more red. See that? I wanted you to really see this one that lays right in front, because that's one of the most important parts of that glad. All right? Now, what we're doing with those buds, is those buds are a lot like the rosebud. All right, we went up and over, made a U. But make sure that these are really tight, really skinny, long, tight buds, because that's how a glad actually looks, all right? Now, then what you're going to do is you're going to come in with your script liner, and we're going to put those center stamens right from the center here. And I usually like to let this dry but we're going to do it really quick. You touch, pull, which means I can't put my finger down, so it's harder to do it this way. So you might want to let it dry just a little bit. Pull those stamens out of the center. Now look what I do here. I'm going to take the green, stroke it through some yellow. Then I'm just going to pull little 
pieces down to finish up the stamens, but I put two colors on one time. Okay? So you don't have to go back and forth and put the light yellow and then go back and put the dark green. That's how what one stroke's all about. You're putting all the paint on your brush at one time and you're making it happen just that quick. All right, you pull the stem down and then you start pulling these leaves up. And actually, I have a Glad painted over here, a whole stem of gladiolas, and I want to show you. This is a barrel stay, and it's really kind of fun because you can put it out in your garden. See those bright, bright colors? You can put this in your garden, or you can hang it on the wall, or just think about painting these on a garden shed, which would be so beautiful, especially during the season when they're not blooming. All right, let me show you some flowers on some pieces that I paint, painted for you. And I chose little, like an old little metal antique piece, a little ball feet. And I took and just put on my little violets and put them on both sides too. Isn't that fun? On the ends. And you can put all your little jewels in there. And grandmas really love those as a gift, along with your kids. They, your little teenagers love to, little hiding places for their jewelry. But canvas. This canvas up here is what I painted with the sweet peas on it. And I even did some little line work with my script liner around the edge. But look at that faux background. Now, I just take a sponge and rub circles all over that canvas with two colors. Remember, two colors at one time gives you the blending and shading very quickly and fun, too. And that's just a nice little gift to say, I was thinking about you, and I know that that's your birthday flower, and here's a nice gift for you. And a sundial. Now, look at that bright yellow and putting my roses right on top of that bright yellow. You're going to have fun painting roses. I've painted so many roses over the years, and I love them, and I just... I make them more lacy sometimes, I make them darker sometimes. Just think about all the colors in your garden and the different varieties of roses that you can paint using two colors, using two colors at one time. I've loved sharing these ideas with you today. With a little patience, you can too fill your year with flowers. Thanks for joining me. also motivates everybody and what I want to also many of you have called in and asked what kind of paper I'm using and what kind of paper to use for greeting cards it's just a bristol board it's just a real smooth slick finish and don't use watercolor paper and be sure that you use the plastic I have in there for you because when you're painting on the plastic you don't feel frustrated yeah. you're it's like a smooth stroke and it's really easy and let's but, talk a little bit about okay. this because with your pledge today of $150 we do have the ultimate kit for one stroke painting that has in it not only the video, which is going to show you how to do all of this, but also it has this great workbook. And this has all the flowers of the year in it. And Donna, you have made this so easy because, as you mentioned, we can just open up. It's got all the birthday flowers of the year, and it goes month by month. And you know what? I'm going to show you in just a second how I painted this gladiola. But what we're doing is we're putting two colors on here, and it blends shades and highlight as we're doing our strokes. And they're very simple strokes. It says push, wiggle, slide, push, wiggle, in. And so they're basically That's doing right. it on the plastic. They can practice as many times as they'd like. And they can follow along to make sure that, that their strokes are looking exactly like right. You go, uh-oh, Donna, that doesn't look quite as good. You need to work on that. <laughs> so you put it back on there and you keep working on it. And it's amazing how simple, how, how you get your shading. We have flat brushes. We have all the sizes you need to do all sorts of little flowers and big flowers. And you can just enjoy what you're learning. You can have a good time. It's a doing. great motivation to get you started on your way to one. Our motivation for doing these programs are hearing from you, hearing how much you enjoy this type of programming, how you want more. So we need for you to do something very simple right now that's called the number on your screen and support your public television station. They gave it to a charity, so they were having a great time. They were having a great time doing that. And the great thing about your technique is that it is so versatile. Not only can you paint on the paper like you're doing right now, but you can make a lot of different crafts items as well. That's right, and what I'd like to show you is that as you're learning these strokes, you can put them together I'm teaching you different flowers but imagining taking those flowers and decorating your home decorating gifts for people 
starting a business. I mean, so many people have said that they're just having a good time doing it, and people say, oh, I want one of those too, or you never told me you were an artist. And they're like, of course I'm not an artist. But you know what? You'll become and feel like an artist by putting a few strokes together with my simple technique. And I'm a mother of seven. I wanted something for myself to decorate my home. I made it very simple because I have no patience. <laughs> <laughs> and it is simple today for you to call in with your pledge of support to this public television station. The number's on your screen. Go to the phone. Dial those numbers. Call us. Let us know how much you value this type of programming. The how-to how and about... We have a lot of time. We don't have a lot of time. We're always busy running around doing things in this busy world. And this makes it perfect because if you're a person like I am who has no patience, has seven children, you don't have to have seven children. There's other ways to become a good painter. <laughs> and you can become a good painter yeah. by watching your public television station, by watching Donna's programs. But to do that, we need for you to call in with your pledge of support because your dollars that you donate make it possible for this public television station to continue bringing you quality programming like Donna's. And Donna, we have to tell people again, with that pledge for $150 today, when you call the number on your screen, they will get the ultimate guide, and that truly does have everything in really for me. Can I really do this? You know what? If you feel like you can't do this, all you have to do is watch me for a minute and me showing you that you're... I'm going to show you that we're filling that brush with paint. We're holding the brush straight up and down. After you practice on my sheet, you're just going to move the brush following the strokes I've done. You can trace off my strokes and put them here so you're just filling in the spot. But let me tell you, it's very simple strokes. And if you don't feel like... If you don't feel like it's something that you're going to jump into, think about somebody in your life that this would touch by giving them something that they could do. Enriching program here on public television. That's what we're all about. Bringing joy and happiness to your life. But we need your help to call that number. And now here's another look at those special thank you gifts. Two colors. We're going to use a uh, sunflower and a green forest here. And we're going to work back and forth. All right, dip, dip, or just work right in the middle, back and forth. The key is, see how hard I'm pushing? We want to get that brush really full of paint. Most important part of my technique is loading the brush, really working the paint in. I want it at least two-thirds full of paint, all right, on both sides. Now, I'm not worrying about the shade, just how much paint I've got on here. And we've got some floating medium here. This is the fluff that says... It's actually the fluff that's inside the paint with no pigment in it, no color. And so what I'm going to do is anytime I think I want to use water, I want to go to the floating medium. I'm going to dip into that, work it in, right back where I was, and then I'm ready. Now, you're only allowed to use that every second or third stroke. If you use too much, it'll make your painting muddy. So now we're going to go over and start painting. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint some grass. Now, these are great beginner strokes. If you've never painted before, you're going to love this because basically, if you've loaded this brush right, everything else is going to go pretty darn easy. Look at this. We're going to be up on the chisel edge. We're going to be leading with a lighter color, and we're going to slowly lift the yellow. See this? Lightly lifting the yellow, dragging the green. All right? I want you to just see that really good because this is what we're going to do right here. We're going to take our whole arm with us as we do this, though. See my little finger, kind of, is guiding me there. I'm going to start here, lift the yellow edge, and then drag. Now, see, every once in a while, you're going to see that draggy, dry area. It's not going to matter because we're going to put wildflowers, but that means I needed more paint. It was getting dry. See this? All right. Now... We're going to go on these blades of grass, and we're going to put some wildflowers. See this? Okay. Now, the, we're going to take a smaller flat brush, a number 12, and we're going to pick up the first colors we're going to use. And I'm going to pick up some white and night sky. Let's put it right here. And let's load that brush. Same way. See, I can dip into the white, and back over here on the blue. Okay, let's work it all in, two-thirds full. Believe it or not, the smaller brush is harder to get it all the way up there than the large brush was. Okay, now we're going to be picking up paint over and over, all right? Now we're going to come to the top of this blade of grass, especially the one I don't like here that I got really fanned out. And I'm going to pull simple strokes, same thing that I was doing up on the chisel edge of the brush, but I'm leading with a lighter color. Pick up more paint. And then we're going to keep coming down. Now this is what I want you to see. It's all going down at an angle. 
it's not straight, it's kind of slightly going towards the green blade of grass. And we're walking these strokes from the left to the right. I'm going to keep picking up paint, walking it from the left to the right, all the way down. And see, the reason I like you to do this from left to the right instead of doing this number is that you will have something exact here instead of real natural looking. See, we don't want that look. It's kind of like wheat. We want to go over this, and we want to randomly pull left to right as we come all the way down here. Now, talking about a little bit of design, you kind of learn design as we go. You don't have to use a pattern. That's what makes this really fun. What we want to do is we want to pick up the next color, and I'm going to just wash out in the water my number 12, pick up some berry wine and some wicker white, actually going to go in between the two. All right. Now, I'm going to have maybe a pink one over here. See, I'm going to follow the angle of that brush. Now, see, I can push a little bit harder on some of them and leave a little bit of a dry, brushy look. And see, that's okay. Or if I want every one of them perfect, let's come over here and do a shorter pink one over here. I can do a short one. I can push a little bit. Or the, just remember, the harder you push, the fatter that little stroke's going to be. But it's still fun. See how much fun that is? All sorts of different styles of flowers. Same brush. Now we're going to do some little other little flowers with that same stroke. All right? Now we're going to pick up uh, the yellow and the white. Remember, we're breaking down your paint with a, with a white each time. So you, if you want yellow, you want a bright yellow so it looks yellow when you're done. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to do a little daisy. So we're going to touch, lean towards the, where we're pulling it to and pull, which we're going to pull it to the center. So touch, lean, pull all the way around and make this great little daisy. Touch, lean, pull, touch, lean, pull all the way around. All right, take the handle of the brush, dip it in the green or whatever color you want and dot it. It's just that easy. Actually, I taught myself how to paint with the handle of the brush when I first started. I did all kinds of dot flowers. But if you're starting out, you're going to love this because it's so easy. You're using the handle of the brush. You're doing just these little teeny short strokes. And now look at this. So far, the grass, that little stroke, all those little heather-looking wildflowers were all with this chisel edge, that, the little bristle edge of the brush. Now, I have another little flower that's really fun, and it's like, it's a dandelion, kind of. I, it's the wrong color, I understand. Everybody's saying that's not really what color dandelions are. But I'm pretending it's just some kind of fluffy little wildflower. Let's do that. I actually get little wildflower books and sit and look at little floral design ones and design it from there. Okay? Now we're flipping this time. Now remember, I'm making you take your whole arm, not flipping your wrist when we're doing the grass. Well, on this one, I want you to flip it at the wrist, okay? We're touching and flipping all these little teeny strokes outward. All right, pick up some more paint. Lots of paint, but now remember, the white's going first because the lighter color is going to go first, and we're dragging the darker color behind. Now, we can take this brush. If it's too dark, we can flip the brush around. See, I had it white first. Now I'm flipping it, and blue, uh, the blue's going to go first. So I can drag a little bit of white highlights in there. See that? I want you to play with this. I want you to have fun with it. I want you to enjoy it. And, and you know what? It only takes about an hour of practicing before you're going, you know what? I can paint. I never thought I could. And you know what? Look at this. So far, we're still doing these little simple strokes that are very easy. Stroke work sometimes scares people because they think, oh, You've got to be skilled and have fine motor skills. Not with this. Very simple little strokes, but you can have this wonderful little garden. And we haven't even done a, a leaf or anything. So, and it still looks pretty. Just imagine putting that on a little greeting card or, or a note card and sending it to somebody. All right. Now, we're going to come back in and do a vine that comes up and over our design. And it's getting a little bit, a little bit more skilled, but not really. I want you to see how simple this is. I'm going to dip in the floating medium because I want this vine to go up and around smoothly. Okay? We're going to start in the ground because that's where it's going to grow from. And we're going to do one nice loose vine. Nice and wavy, okay? Not really rigid. Now we're going to start on this side. Come over. This side. Come over. See, so just slightly come up 
and come back. Now remember, don't grow all those vines from the ground because that's not really how they grow in nature. They kind of come off and branch off of the original vine. I mean, you can even take that vine now and have another piece go off of that. But we don't want to do that yet because what we want to do is place our flowers in our leaves. And even though you're not going to really see much of your vine and when you're all done, it, you know what? It helps me with placement so I don't have to draw a pattern. All right? Now what we're gonna now what we're gonna do at this point is put in some blue flowers. Now these they could be any color you want. Remember, have it match your house, whatever you want, or somebody else's house you're giving to as a gift. Now, these are five petal flowers. Just remember, you can do anything over four, five, six, seven, whatever you like. Now what we're gonna do is put our little finger here. Let's get a good spot here, and we're gonna touch, push the blue out and let the brush stand back up. Touch, push, let it come back. Touch, push. Now, the most important thing I like you to see when I'm doing this, see, I'm gonna come around and do five petals. What, and see, look at this, I got a little dry edge there. If I don't like it, I'm gonna come back. This is the beauty of one stroke painting. We're blending, shading, and highlighting in each stroke. If I don't like a stroke I've done, I pick up fresh paint and go over that and restroke over that. Now, what I want you to see that is really important here is that I'm not turning the brush. I'm not turning my wrist like this. Remember that. Because everybody has a tendency to do that because it kind of looks like maybe that's what we're doing. Now, let's look at this at an another angle. We touch. You just push down on your bristles and you let your bristles do that work. And then you kind of guide them and stand back up. Now, a lot of people say, oh, I've got this nasty little white spot there I don't like. Well, guess what? If you don't see it, don't worry about it because I'm going to stroke right back over that edge. When I put the next pet on, you don't see it. The only time you'd have to worry about it is on your last stroke. Push, lift. See, there it is again. And see, even I do that. So I don't worry about it. See, I don't like that. It's not. It's got too much white in it. Look at this. Just go back over it. Just that simple. Now, I'm going to come in here and do a couple of these little guys here that are just like trailing blossoms where I don't make the whole blossom. Do a couple little small ones, dot, dot, dot. So they're trailing off of there. Now I do it just that easy and you're going, it's not that easy. But it, actually you'll be surprised that very quickly you'll be doing strokes and you'll feel like an artist. And if you just kind of follow what I'm showing you here, you're going to touch, push out, push out, push out. See this? All the way around. And the most important thing, besides all the other most important things I tell you, is to enjoy yourself and don't worry. You know, nature is not perfect. Everything in, in, out in the garden that you see, not every petal's just exactly alike. So I kind of enjoy it. I don't worry about it being all exact. I'm just playing around, having a good time, learning how to paint as we go so that you're enjoying what you're doing and not stressing. I have seven children, remember, and what I... When I'm saying seven children makes a diff big difference when you need some stress release, and painting was that for me. So hopefully you'll enjoy it, and painting might be that for you. It's a good way not to think about your woes, okay? Now what we want to do is we want to take and load this brush with two colors again. This is a number 12, a smaller brush again, and we're going to do one stroke lace, all right? They're really simple and fun. You're just going to touch, push down, turn, and lift. Push, turn, left. Now, we're, I'm going to do this slowly this way. Okay, let's come over here. Let me get some good paint on here. Now, see, I'm going to touch, push down, turn the green slightly towards the tip, and left. Now, you don't want to do a complete half circle when you're turning. Let's do it right here. Touch, push, turn slightly, and then slide to the tip. Just that easy. And that's a one-stroke leaf. Blending, shading, and highlighting in each stroke. Now we're going to come all the way around. I like to do clusters of three sometimes. And one way to help you to know which direction to have those leaves go is I take my fingers and wherever my fingers are pointing is where a leaf could point all along the vine. All right? And that's going to help you because a lot of times when you're first starting out, you're learning how to stroke and how to do some painting, but you're not sure about design. And that's kind of like a design thing. So I don't want you to stress about it. I want you to look at that and say, okay, my finger's pointing there. Donna said I could put one there. Just that easy. Same thing with a blossom if you want to have a, a flower pointing a certain way. Now what we're going to do is come 
This gives you another opportunity. If you don't, see, I don't like those leaves right on top of the vine. I like them off the vine. So then you can come in, you're going to be able to come right in here and pull another opportunity to pull stems from out here in. Now, every time I'm off and you don't see me, I'm out here getting more paint. So just think about that. That's how often you want to get paint. Actually, we can put it right here so you can see. But it's real important that you're getting lots of paint. You're pulling the stem into each leaf. Actually, I usually tell you to stroke a leaf and then pull a stem so that you'll get a good habit there of doing that. Because I actually like the stems in there. See, I'm a little shaky there, but it doesn't matter if I don't like one. See, I'll put a leaf right on top of that. Cover any of my mistakes or anything I don't like. So, now we're going to take and come in here, put some curly cues. This is the only brush I use water, so let me show you how we get this brush loaded and how we fill, it, fill in paint in this brush at the right consistency so that you can do curly cues. And these, these tendrils really, really made me feel artistic, okay? We're going to take and we're going to go into water and right on the edge of this plate, you like my palette here? It's just a foam plate. Isn't that great? We all have those usually in our kitchen and then, you know what? I don't have to clean up, I throw it in the garbage. <laughs> Look at this. I go and pick up water at least three times and I'm making a circle and each time I make a circle, so you get a spot like that that you can go next to your paint. I don't want you to pull from here and go to the side. Do not do that. I want you to make little circles next to the paint. Now you roll your brush so you don't have a big drip and you pull out of it. I can even, let me pull this paper towel up here. I can even lay it there and get the excess water if I'm worried and then pull from it, okay? Now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to take this brush like you're putting it in your hand like a pencil and then pull it up to the first knuckle, all right? Now, we're going to move from the shoulder. We're not moving from our wrist or our fingers from the shoulder, okay? We're going to come over here and I want you to take your little finger. Of course, it's better to let this dry, but I want you to get going making circles. Watch this. I make some circles, slowly lower it, and then I have curls. Now look, this was what makes it look better, is if you do one, two, three, one way, and reverse and do a couple the other way. All right, now doesn't that make it look fun when you start adding those? All right, now let's put, use a scruffy brush, my beginner's favorite brush. We're gonna take this brush, it's gotta be dry. You take this brush and you really fluff it out, see this? Really fluff this brush out. Take your fingernails and really pull it out. Dry when you start. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pounce in two colors. We pounce half the brush into yellow. Now we're going to go on the edge of the green puddle. Pounce half of it into green. Lots of paint, okay? And this pouncing effect is really nice. Hear it? That's what I want to see. Really hard pounces. Don't be dipping like this. Hard pounces makes a huge difference. I just taught a bunch of uh, people how to paint on walls and that was their biggest problem. They weren't pouncing. They weren't pouncing hard enough. They were just kind of dipping into it. Now see this? We're putting green up. I'm not turning the brush around. I'm keeping the green up and I'm moving. See, I'm moving up and down. This is what I don't want to see. I don't want to see a straight line like this. All right? So pounce. You'll see. Let's go back to the palette. We're going to keep coming back to the palette. Hear the pouncing here? This pouncing here is the same pouncing as when you're loading it. Okay? Now you can make it look like there's another layer right here. Bring some dark in there. Now this is the only time you have to let anything dry. If you notice as I was painting, I didn't let anything dry in between. I just painted on top of painting, on top of stroke, on top of stroke, which made it really fun and quick. I have no patience, so I like everything really quick. But when it got to the mossy, we're using a lot of paint, so we've got to let it dry a little bit. But that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and show you. We take another dry brush, and we're going to load it. If you clean that one out, you pounce that one into your basin. That's a good thing. With our flat brushes, we rake it to get the paint all out of the silver part. Look at this. The silver part is of the ferrule. It's considered the ferrule, and you don't want paint to dry in the ferrule. So on this brush, as we're pouncing this brush right here, you pounce that into the water, squeeze it really good and dry it out. Now, on this one, we're going to pounce it all white. Okay, let's go get a little bit of pink on one little edge. Turn the other edge of the brush over. Let's go over here to get some blue, maybe. Okay, 
Now, if you can see, I don't know if you can tell that, we've got a little bit of pink on one corner and a little bit of blue on the other corner. See that? All right, isn't that great? You can just see, I can just lean the brush, tip a little bit of pink. There we go. Come around here. Okay, now turn the brush over and tilt it. Now, before I wasn't tilting that brush. Now, I don't want you to tilt that brush when you're doing your green. Okay. See this? Now, the key to this is I don't have to wash this brush all out again. All I have to do is wipe off that extra color and pick up. See, I'm just going to take on a dry paper towel, take all that extra color off, repounce it into the white. Okay, then tip another color because I hate anything where I have to take and wait for that brush and dry that brush all out. So this kind of helps you cheat so you can like grab the next color. There we go. Now, wasn't that fun? I had a lot of fun. I hope you did. But don't go away. I'll be right back. Hello, I'm Jeff Mose along with Rhea Fiken and our special guest Donna Dewberry. And we invite you to stay tuned for more of One Stroke Painting with Donna Dewberry. This is a brand new how-to special here on public television. And I would sit up all night literally and paint at my dining room table. And what I wanted is a way to teach people at home how they could paint and with all the tools I didn't have. I wish that I had a video that showed me how. Because I couldn't take painting lessons. I didn't have time to like leave a nursing baby to uh -huh. go take a class. Sure. But you know what? What I've done is made this possible so you can learn at home, too, just like I was doing. The thing that is so wonderful to me about it is that not only can a beginner do it, but anyone can really learn to do it. And a whole family can do it together. We're all looking that. for things to do That's right. with our families. And older people who have time to be at home and want to do something that's creative and make them feel really good, this is it. And if I was depressed or worried about finances or teenagers, <laughs> <laughs> what I would do is I would just sit down. And when you're painting, watch this, when you're creating, you know what happens? You forget about all your woes. And so if you've got somebody out there that you love that needs something, Something. Just think about giving them as a gift, this as a gift. You're giving a gift to public TV because you're helping put on free TV for everybody. And I, that excites me that you're able to do something other than the normal cable television. That's this is sort of like a miracle to me to Isn't see you wonderful? do this and watch it. I do want to remind all of you that in order to do it, you need to have the tools. And in order to get the tools, we're hoping to pledge $150. We'd like to send you as a thank you gift Donna Dewberry's One Stroke Ultimate Combo. And the kit contains three One Stroke. What a deal. It also has a 32-page One Stroke workbook. It has complete paint kit with brushes and three pattern sheets and a scruffy brush and a reusable practice sheet. And I, now look can how I fast interrupt that you for a second? Oh, I would love you to show them. Okay, book. here we are. This uh, sort of looks like what you're doing. Right. right. And here's the workbook. Let me show you on the video what we're going to do All together. Right. This is the picture I painted on the video. And I shrunk it down so you don't have to freeze the video and look at it. But right here is what I do with wait, you. Wait, wait, wait. What? Before you do it, I just want to show everybody that what we have here is clear plastic. plastic. Clear plastic. It comes so right up there put with the you. Clear plastic on here. And this is right on the teacher stroke, right at home with you. You put your brush down. Look how hard that is. Start and end. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> you go, you push your brush down. You you wiggle and you lift. There you go. You practice it. You slide it and say, oh, is that looking like Donna's? And as soon as it starts looking like mine, then you build the flower. And Just the, that easy. It, the best thing about it is you don't have to do it on television. So <laughs> nobody's going to see you when you don't do it right. And if you make mistakes, you can do it. You can stroke right over them if you make a mistake or something you don't like. As I'm stroking here, if I don't like the stroke I've done, we just pick up more paint, and we go right back over it again. Just that easy. No water. Real simple. And you know what? What's really good, I always forget to tell everybody. Yeah, I was just going to say. Right? It right. looks like oils. Rich, Absolutely. vivid colors. But you know what? It's water-based, so it doesn't hurt anybody. And no smell. It, you know? It is really a miracle. Kids get it all over. It doesn't hurt you. And the combo that. kit is yours when you make a pledge of $150. The number's on your screen, but it's not the only thing that you can get to help you paint. Let's go back to Jeff. 
Thank you very much, Rhea. We have some additional thank you gifts with a pledge of $90 to public television. How about this? Donna Dewberry's One Stroke Combo. Now, this kit contains one brush stroke basics video. Now, that's 30 minutes in length. It also includes the basic stroke workshop, which is 36 pages that Donna and uh, Rhea just showed you. And it also includes one... Brush. And what's fun about the scruffy brush is that this is the beginner's favorite brush because look, <laughs> look at that, and you have a flower. And all you're doing is you're picking up two colors, we're passing those around, look at this, pounce, pounce, pounce. Oh, it look looks so wonderful. I do want to remind you that we are here. We are hoping to hear from you. The phones are getting very, very busy. That's the kind of thing we want right here on public television. Without your support, we can't bring you programs like Donna Dewberry's One Stroke Painting. She originated this great technique. You can paint at home. Your kids can paint at home. You can do this as a family. Give you a lot of satisfaction. And while you're getting these wonderful thank you gifts, you are indeed helping us here at public television this is your public television station we bring you the programs you want to see and we need you you're the public in public television and without you we can't do our job so we'll be back with donna in just a little while please watch the next part of the show learn some more and then please remember call us we'll come back with a hummingbird pounce it into our maple syrup and our licorice and we're going to do half maple syrup maybe even more than half because i want my this is going to be the center of the sunflower so we don't want it to be too black okay just a little bit of black there we go all right half brown half black now we're going to be double handed here we're going to have a brush in both hands this brush the number 12 flat remember i do all my strokes with a flat brush we're going to take this brush and we're going to work it in between the yellow ochre and the school bus yellow a light, uh, kind of a bright color and a more dull color. So we've got the shading all at one time. All right? Now, this is what we're going to do. We're going to come over here, ready to paint this sunflower. This is actually a really simple, simple flower to do. And actually, I put a lot of people on it as a beginner stroke also. So we're going to pounce like a C motion. Can you see? We're going to start right there. Can you see the C? Okay. That kind of rhymes together, doesn't it? All right, we're going to pounce the brown up. Bring it around, nice round oval. Now pounce the brown back on top of the black. Can you see that? Let's do that again, right in here. I want more brown, because what I want to see is a chocolate donut with chocolate icing. Kind of looks like that, doesn't it? All right, now, while that's nice and wet, I'm gonna switch brushes. All right, we're gonna come right here. We're gonna pick up some yellow and some gold. We're going to grab the edge of that, push, turn left, push, turn left. Now, what we're doing here is we're going to do one stroke leaves. Push, turn left, all the way around, grabbing the wet paint. Okay, push, turn left, push, turn left. All the way around here. See, now what I think is beautiful about this, what makes it so easy for you when you're beginning to paint, if you've never painted before and you're going to love, is that it blends shades and highlights as we're pulling the stroke right from the wet. See this? We've got little brown streaks here. If you're painting this, traditional painting methods, what would happen is that you would come back, do this gold, do the petal gold, do it light, do shading, pull little streaks in it, come back here, work on the center. We're doing it all in one stroke. Now, I want you to look at this brush. Right on the edge of this brush, I pounced in and I picked up a little bit of gold, okay? See the little bit of gold on the edge? Now, while that center's wet, we want to take that little bit of gold and we want to come right over here and pounce right along here. And while it's wet, it kind of blends in a little bit to the brown. And it doesn't make it look like it's laying on top. It looks like it's shaded into it. Now, what we want to do at this point is, let's do a, a half of a sunflower. All right, a little half of sunflower right here. And I have a little bit of that gold in there still. It doesn't bother me. I just come over here, pick up paint, lots of paint. See how much paint? Lots. Grab that wet. What I'd like to remind you here while I'm thinking about it is if this paint, the center, dries up before you get all the way around, 
all you do is repounce the area that dried up and then start putting some more strips on it just that easy all right now if i want a half of one right here a little bit of a little sprig there that's all you do just a few little one stroke leaves there now we're going to come in and put some leaves these leaves are real fun but they're really big all right so what we want to do, I've got my floating medium kind of running around my plate here, so let's turn it around. I'm going to take this brush, the flat brush, larger, the three-quarter inch, and I'm going to work in between the yellow and the green forest. So school bus yellow here, really bright. And the green forest, two-thirds up the brush, pushing really hard. Dip into my floating medium, work that in. No water, remember, floating medium is okay, but not water. All right, now we're going to grab this. Touch, lean away, and pull. Grab that sunflower. Touch, lean away, and we're, we're leading with our yellow. Remember, a lighter color always works better when we're doing that stroke. Now, short little strokes. All right, to grab that bud and then pull it back down. Now, pretty easy so far. Now, this leaf is real fun. I want to show you quickly here. See that? slide down and then I run it all the way back. Now I'm going to slow down so you can watch me do it slower and see that the movement's quite easy and it's not as hard. I mean it looks real fun. It is real fun and easy. Let me show you how. I'm going to make a full leaf and I'm going to kind of do a line like this so it looks like a kite. Can you see the kite? There we go. Now follow this movement with me. Your eyes are watching the dark green. You're going to start right here on this line. You're going to go out over that line see out over that line it's just like a loop 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 all the way see i'm sliding down the center watch the center this time see if i can get my arm in here so you can still see this all the way down to the tip it's kind of like an upside down christmas tree well sideways christmas tree huh there we go See if I don't like what I'm doing here. Just clean it back up. There's no mistakes with one stroke. Pull the stem in while that's nice and wet. Just that easy. All right? Now, that was fun. I think you'll like doing that. Some flowers, remember, are a great way to start. But now we're going to do roses. They're my favorite. And most people like to do roses, but, I mean, would like to be able to paint a rose. They can grow them sometimes, but they definitely don't ever think they can paint them. Well, I'm going to show you a really quick way to paint roses that really look like a rose. Now, I'm going to put this one over here to the side so we're ready to paint. I've got my palette already with all these bright colors for roses, and I like to do a color that's kind of like a peace rose. And it's got a berry wine and a white. I'm, you know what? I want to show you something real quick that's important that I sometimes fail to tell you. You take and you wet the brush first. We don't start with a dry brush, all right? We wet the brush and we lay it down on a paper towel and let the excess water run out. It's a flat brush, nice chisel. All right, the chisel's this little tip here. Sometimes people say, Donna, you never told me what a chisel was. Well, I didn't, now I have, right? Now, let's load this brush. Oops, I need floating medium on this plate, so when I'm over here on my easel, I'll have it. Let's put it a little bit right here. See, it's the fluff in the paint with no pigment, all right? Let's work this paint in our brush. Most important part of one-stroke painting is filling your brush full of paint, knowing how to load that brush and not letting it get muddy. Some of, some of you, as you'll paint, you'll find out that your brush gets all pink. We don't want it to be pink. We want to definitely see white and berry wine, okay? Now, now I like to sometimes dip into a third color. Now we're going to get really tricky on you, okay? We're going to dip a little bit of yellow. See that? A little bit of sunflower. I can work that in. But this is what I'm going to do. As I'm painting, every once in a while, I'll come over here and go dip, 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 and paint. All right? So every time you feel like you need it, that's what I want you to do. We're going to start here, one, two, three, and we're going to wiggle and do a seashell. All right, doesn't that look like a seashell? Just as easy as that. Watch the yellow or the lighter edge. We're wiggling. Now, see this brush? I'm doing this. All right, that's the movement we're doing, that we're doing. Okay, one, two, three, wiggle. All the way around. Picking up more paint, one, two, three. That, see that little starter stroke? As we're dipping in here, we're gonna do this. One, two, three, maybe even four, five, six. You wanna get it all blended in. But we don't blend it on our plate. We come right over here and do it right on our piece. 
Okay, lots more paint. Now, we're going to put two lines here because we're going to do a rosebud in the center of that rose. Now, let's come right here and show you away from the rose so that you can see it really nice and clear that we go from this line up and over to the second line. Now, our eyes are watching the lighter edge as we're making a U. We're going to come right here and make a second U, and that's how we do our rosebud. We can even do a couple more little strokes if we want to. But what we're going to do inside this rose is we're just going to do two of those strokes. Up and over, there's one, and there's two. Now, you face that bud in whichever direction you want that flower to be facing. See this line right here? Right on that exact line, the same height, I want you to lean out and go one, two, three. That's that starter stroke. It's like one, two, three, go. Ready? All right, right here. We're ready to do this side. One, two, three. Let's go on this side. All right. See, I'm going to keep coming down here and picking up paint around here. I don't like to tip it, though, because my floating medium is running all over when I'm tipping it for you. All right, now, lots of times at this point, you will mess up your bud. And so we want to go in and clean it up a little bit, all right? So we just restroke right here because I don't want you to feel like, oh, no, I've, I've messed up my flower now. All you do is go pick it back up. Now, touch on that same line, lean out with the white, and scoop across. Now, if you watch this brush right on top of there again, scoop. Let's do this side, scoop across this way. See the bristles come up? It's real important. Watch me one more time. Scooping those bristles up. All right, now one little slice right underneath. Now, I did went over that so many times, I've got a little muddy there, so I could just clean that up a little bit. So now, what we've done is we've used darker colors to get that depth. We want it to look really deep and rich in the middle so that you can see the layers of the petals, okay? Now, we're going to pick up and do our leaves. All right, we're going to pick up white and the green. This is a dark green. We could do a lighter green if we'd like to. Okay. Now we're going to touch here. We're leaning the yellow first, and we're coming around. Touch, lean, lift as we come around. All right, all the way around that rose. Touch, lean, pull back. So that's what we do first in our design, is we pull our stems first. Then we're going to come right in here, and watch this. One, two, three. We're going to wiggle, and we're going to make a full leaf. We're going to pull a stem right in. Now, I'm going to slow down and show you how to do that a little bit slower so that you can pick this up and see how easy it is to create a leaf. We're going to put our V there. And watch this. One, two, three. Now, your eyes are watching the dark green edge. And doesn't that look like a seashell? That's just like the rose we were just doing, that rose petal. Look here again. Wiggle. There's our seashell. Our handle of our brush is very important that it stays straight up and down, and then we slide to the tip. One, two, three, we wiggle, and then when we see the seashell, then we can slide to the tip. Now, what's amazing about this is that pretty much looks like a heart to me. Doesn't it look like one to you? You could come in here now. I'm going to pick up a, oops, I picked up a lot of pink. Watch this. Let's pick up. And here's another side you can do, just kind of sliding. All right. Do some one-stroke leaves in here. See, I'm starting to lose my paint. All I do is add a little bit of floating medium and re-stroke over it. Don't feel like, oh, no, I've messed up. I like to come in with a few of the number one. Let's come up here. The number 12. Smaller leaves, okay. Let's do a few of those. Let me show you. We're going to use floating medium. Say my brush is dirty. I've got a new brush, so of course it's not. Let's take and clean it into the floating medium. Okay. Let's get a little bit more because I don't have much color. See, like we're cleaning it into there. Okay. Now, we're going to rake that off and we're going to paint with this. And we're going to have little soft pink leaves. Look at that. Now, they can be any color. They can be brown or green. And when they dry, it's amazing. It looks like shadow leafing in the back. And I have fun. I've really been doing this a lot on a lot of my furniture pieces and all that I paint. Um, and just gives it a little bit of detail. All right? Then we come in with our scruffy brush. We're going to come here. And the scruffy brush is really good for doing wisteria. And the wisteria is really good for covering up anything that you feel like you did really bad. All right? But we're not going to do anything really bad. We're going to be really good and have a good time while we're doing it. No negativity, okay? We're going to pounce into the white. 
half white and half purple. Okay, look at that brush again. We want a little bit of both colors. Looks like I need a little bit more white. Let's go over here and pick up a little bit more white. Here, lots of hard pouncing, because then that's what I want you to do up here. And I want you to pounce around areas. See that? Now, I'm not turning the brush around. I'm just moving like this, okay? We're going to come in here, pounce by leaning the brush on its edge, okay? And if you over pounce it, it will become light lavender. We don't want to do that. We want to make sure that as we're pouncing it, we're getting all that pretty shading. But we're also keeping a good shape, okay? There's my round area. And it doesn't, I don't want straight little designs here. I want it to curve and hang out of our, our design. So we don't want to just have two, because that's an even number. Let's come in here and put a little piece of one right here. So we'll have three. And it's even fun when it starts picking up some of the green and all, and all those other colors. Now this is acrylic paint. It's water-based. There's no smell. You don't have to worry about cleaning up with nasty chemicals. All we're doing here is we're using water cleanup. I keep running over here and getting the water over here, because this script liner, we're going to do curly cues. We need water for it. But what the beauty about this is that you can wash it up right in your kitchen sink even with i even use some dish soap sometime to work into my brushes to get that out now watch this my little fingers going around in circles okay see we're going to touch let's go over this one more time i want to review this with you really quick because this is so important and it'll make it look so light and pretty when you're done we're going to take and we're going to take this water and we're going to pick it up at least three times and see as I'm going in a half circle, I mean, I'm going around in a circle, I'm grabbing a little bit of green until I have an inky consistency, not pasty, not watery. And you know what you could do? You can run it right here to see if it's watery. See, you can run it along there and say, oops, too thin, before you touch your piece, okay? Now I've got a little bit of yellow there, but that's okay. Roll the brush. See, roll it and come out of it, then we're ready to go. Now watch how I'm going to put this in my hand. We're going to take this brush, remember like a pencil, I was showing earlier today, if you've been watching us, we're going to put it up like this, this is a pencil, we're going to pull it straight up to the first knuckle, and then we want the paint to run down to the tip, so we're going to make big circles like this, alright, so practice, one, two, three, reverse direction, and two tight circles to the, to the right, alright, and this is all, and that's exactly what we're going to do, hopefully your piece is dry, so you're not running your fingers through it, but you're going to touch, and make circles. Now, we have a lot of lefties out there that want to learn how to paint, and they're always thinking, oh, this is too hard for a lefty, but it really isn't. All you're going to do, remember that you guys adapt to the right-hand world in different ways than, um, than we might be doing it here. So what I want you to do is turn it so it's comfortable for you. And remember that, like when I'm doing the leaves, a lot of times I will take this stroke, and I will be push, turn, lift to the right, you're going to have to put it in your left hand, and you'll be pulling it towards your body. Now, remember, you just turn your projects around so it's easy for you to grab them, all right, and start painting. Remember, your hand goes out like this, so your rosebuds and your leaves face out. And so it's a very simple technique of laying your design step by step, which was the big rose, then the small roses. Then you come in with your big leaves and then your small leaves. And then we're going to come in with our wisteria. Or we can do little five-petal flowers. Now, I want to show you. Let's take and clean this up and show you the difference. Sometimes I do wisteria, especially if I'm first starting out and I want something really quick. And that's pretty impressive, too, because it really looks like hanging flowers there. Okay, so I'm going to pick up some white and purple. And all I would do is come in here. Now, I can turn it around instead of the purple. Watch this. Instead of the purple out like this, my little five-petal flower, dip the handle, put the little center. Instead of doing that, look what happens when I turn it the other way. And I come in here and, whoops, too much paint. Remember what I said? There's no mistakes. I just come right back here, pick up fresh, more white, fresh paint. And let's stroke right over this. Okay, push left, push left, push left. All right, now look at the difference, and I overlap the little petals on top of each other. See, I picked up a little green there. It's actually really pretty. Okay, now look at the difference when we have the light on the outside of the petal. 
same stroke as the purple one over here that we did, but the purple on the outside, this has white. And it just gives a whole different look. There we go. Remember, you can come in. I use light pink there. We can come in and do some dark green, just solid green, and have fun while we're doing it. See, you've already learned how to paint wildflowers, roses, and sunflowers, but there's still more to come, and I'll be right back. You know what the best part of this too is that this is the only place that you can right now as this gift is the only place that you can get the this combination it is three just hour wonderful. videos and the videos are what i wish i had at home that's why i created them so that you can do this at home like i did while i was raising my seven children i would sit down at night at my dining room table and have fun oh and have fun and do something so very beautiful and creative now See what that? Kind of, see yeah. the brown? See the brown streaking from, from by me touching the wet paint? Push, turn left. It's acrylic paint. It's water-based. And painting flowers are usually crafters or people who want to paint their most difficult thing to paint because you have to know blending, shading, and highlighting. Uh -huh. And you know what? In one stroke, you blend, shade, and highlight. And you know what? Because I taught myself, I don't even know why it's supposed to be dark or light here or there. <laughs> I just make it kind of look good. So you we know? can just follow your directions. That's right. I have a couple things I want right. to ask you. First of all, a lot of people who are calling in and making pledges also have questions. Okay. They want once more to ask you, if they are allergic to paints, can they use your paints? You know what? It's water-based acrylic, so it's a lot less problem with allergies than anything you can imagine. And you know, I'm not saying foolproof that nobody would be allergic to, but it, we haven't had anybody who say they are. Right. Another question. Besides painting on paper, how other, how, what other surfaces? Oh, you're going to love this because I show you in the videos, you can paint on metal, fabric, you can paint this on your walls. Is that oh, too that's fun? that's incredible. You can paint it on your walls. You could just sit and paint on the plastic. That's what I like to tell you is that when you're taking these three videos, you can continually learn from one one hour video to the next. You can work all year long just practicing and creating I, flowers I, I just, on is, all sorts of surfaces. I don't want to interrupt you, but that mm -hmm. is just amazing to me. And of course, I do want to remind you that as amazing as it is, you can do it too, and you can do it, but you need all the things to do it. So I'm urging you to call the number on your screen and make a pledge of $150, because when you do, we're going to send you Donna Dewberry's walk. Now practice on here, and then you know what you do? What? You wipe it off and practice again. What do you wipe it off with? Well, anything. Paper towel. Paper water, towel will yes. do it? Yeah, well, you know, wet one, whatever. You just wipe it off and this practice again. This is really great. Because you know something, then, Donna? I think you really are artistic. Now, if, if well, you're I not... I know I was. Okay, but if you're not real artistic, it's practice makes perfect. That's right. And this is the way you can practice. That's right. And you know what you do? You just keep picking up paint, no water. You're stroking on this side. You do the first stroke, and then the second stroke, and then the third stroke, and before you know it, you have the whole rose bed. And it's real simple, and you can be doing that right away. And this is a part of the combo kit. But we have a couple of other thank you gifts that you might be interested in, so let's go to Jeff, and he'll tell you about it. But call! That's what we're here for. Thank you very much, Rhea. As a matter of fact, we do have some wonderful thank you gifts at other pledge levels. With a pledge then I decided I want to go sell my things at the craft stores. I'm at the craft shows and go around and sell things to other people to make their homes pretty, and they love it. Well, there is so much that you can do with these paints. The phones are getting very, very busy. I do want to ask you to please call in and make your pledges right now because you will enjoy this so much. One other thing, Donna, what a great gift to get one of Donna's uh, combo, ultimate combo gifts or any of the uh, gifts it's that we're telling you about because program. you can just give it to somebody, they can do it, you can do it. That's right. And I I'm just amazed how beautiful this Isn't is. Isn't this fun, Rhea? And you know what? Just think, if you make mistakes, you know, everybody, as they're learning, they're going, oh, I hate this, I wish I didn't do that like that. <laughs> All you do is pick up fresh paint, go over it. So there are no mistakes. So you're having fun, and if you ever thought that you would love to be an artist, guess what? Way I can join the stroke easily. So work the stroke up and lower the boom into one side 
and then the other. And let us add a couple of cheerful companions. Mm, I like this phoenix eye shape between the leaves. A lot of times as we do leaves, we should keep an eye on the side to see the space distribution as well. Light green, tip touching dark green. Have little ones crossing over, peeking through. I try to keep this group a little bit lower so that it creates a valley to invite people to the middle of the painting. And now I load the dark green with the tip touching a little ink. I work a couple of strokes upwards And then adding a couple to bring one side to the other. I load the dark green with a little bit ink. I'll add a little bit of the sheets in the dark to divide the space to make it less monotonous. and showing some fold to the sheath. Cheerful. And still dark green with touch of ink. And let me build a bridge from Japan to Holland or from Holland to Japan, allowing this plan to link the spirit of East and West. Whether this is Dutch iris or Japanese iris, Oriental iris, the love of iris is universal.
space because this way I can reload the color and sometimes touching a little ink to show the dark shadow and then work the stroke from the base up. And that way I can join the stroke easily. So work the stroke up and lower the boom into one side and then the other. And let us add a couple cheerful companion. Mm, I like this phoenix eye shape between the leaf. A lot of times as we do leaves, we should keep an eye on the side to see the space distribution as well. Light green, tip touching dark green. Have little ones crossing over, peeking through. I try to keep this group a little bit lower so that it creates a valley to invite people to the middle of the painting. And now I load the dark green with the tip touching a little ink. I work a couple strokes upwards and then adding a couple to bring one side to the other. I load the dark green with a little bit ink. I'll add a little bit of the sheets in the dark to divide the space to make it less monotonous. And showing some fold to the sheath. Cheerful. And still dark green with touch of ink. shoulder pad arch up and do a nice kick. Now I like to show a profile leaf reaching up. I really light green. And sometimes I reload the tip color just to boost up the contrast. I have the brush tip pointing to the lower right, I would say in relation to a clock, it's about like four. And using the side of the brush, lifting upwards, settle the pressure, lifting upwards, and follow the baseline, push it outward, and then extending, doing a kick, I have the brush now loading the dark green with a touch of ink and showing the other side of the folded leaf. We will do a darker shade running side by side with the lighter one. And I leave a hairline space and work a parallel stroke to show oh. I like to continue develop a couple additional leaves to add some depth. And these will be also in the shadow. So I have the brush load the light green, tip dark green, and then the very tip dip into the ink. I have a leaf reaching downward and extending to the left to accentuate that cascading descending pattern of the composition. 
And between the shadow leaves, sometimes it's very nice to just occasionally make a reference of a liaison, a go-between. A leaf say, I'm going to be the bridge. And now we have an exciting cluster of leaves with continents, peninsula, islands, in and out. And while the leaf is still wet, I'm going to use the medium-sized mountain horse. I'm going to work off the bleed-proof white, mixing with some of the yellow and light green into kind of a creamy condition and saturate this brush with that color. And I like to add a fishbone-like vein and having the brush dancing, showing that energy. And if you let the mountain horse brush to do its own line work, everything is so happy. It's mostly movement of the arm. And in that way, the energy is generated from your whole body. Timing is everything. We must not wait until the leaf dried up. And this is perfect blending of the yin and yang, or the lines and color shades. Continue onwards. I would consider this as a host group, and I will place a guest group down to further develop the composition. I have the light green, tip touching dark green. I like to start the guest group by showing an anchor leaf. When I do the middle section, I deliberately create a V shape to show that indentation of the heart. And on top of this leaf, I like to stretch out a couple arms using the profile leaf. I clean the brush, loading the white green and tip touching some light green. I blend the tip. I have the brush tip pointing down and moving upwards and moving higher for the second stroke to finish the folding attitude. Follow the baseline, extending out, and then follow the baseline again and freeway exit. And I like to do a smaller, a guest one on the other side. Just to add a little balance, we'll have the dark green with touch of ink. I build a wall sometimes to allow a space between the light and dark, and then set the pressure and go out. Build a wall moving out, extend the tip. Sometimes the top side maybe is behind the underside. In that case, they need to be consistent, behind and behind. Other times, it could pop out in the front. And then this will relate to this. It's in front, so this will also be in front of that. And again, while things are still moist, I'm bringing in the line specialist, the mountain horse brush, and I lubricate the tip with that lovely creamy white yellow. It's almost attacking. And it's 
relentless. More enough. I come back to the orchid bamboo, and now I'm going to have the brush pick up that purple green and dry the body. And we want to introduce a little dragon that will leap over some of these green waves. Settle the brush with forceful motion first. Many times they are like V or W. When it gets further down, the stroke gets heavier. And we like to follow each of the center vein, turn and connect the leaf with a stem. And I'll try to avoid what I call chicken fun. Don't make all these points come together like this. Alternate so each leaf has a different rooting. Composition is a lot more interesting. And you can always change course and slightly going down a little further or going up a little bit to avoid that dreaded chicken foot. And while the branch is still moist, I push a couple happy dots. Reload the purple green. I will let loose the dragon by leaping through the green cluster and cascading, continue downwards, linking it to the anchor station. Leaping through this, can you see that motion of the dragon? Loving it. And we want to send out a couple of scouts. Searching. On top, perhaps some loop. The loop. The loop. And now we want to add a few flowers. I'm still using orchid bamboo. I clean the brush. Having some light purple with the tip touching the dark purple. Little scoop motion. Continue. Settle. Turn around. Working that wheel of the trumpet. I have the stroke come down, going turn around, go back up, couple little stroke, finishing the trumpet. Change to the flow brush. I have the brush touch the light purple with the tip touching the deep purple. And I will have the brush at an angle so I can settle with a little bit of lower the boom. And I'll try to retain some of this nice space, working a few of these dark shadows in the center area. Clean the brush. I come back with a hint of yellow and place this yellow at the root of the purple. Sometimes you see it, sometimes you don't. Back to the orchid bamboo. I have the brush loading some white, tip light purple, 
and the very tip dark purple. Next to the flower, I'll have a little bud turning. At their root, I have the light green with a little purple green and adding calyx. And with this little bud serving as a liaison, I'm going to have another flower to accompany the first flower. Loading the light purple with tip touching dark purple. I use the side of the brush and set the pressure and then lift. And then visualize the circle and continue the movement of the wheel. And in the front, petals are lighter. Sensuous lips. White with the light purple. Extending tube. and concentrated purple from the center lower the boom using the small flow having a hint of yellow we have another flower with a wide open smile in the lower group I like to set a couple calyx and then place some buds. I have the light green, tip touching a little bit purple or purple green. Calyx, calyx. It's hard to stop once you get this going. A little white touching the light purple and dark purple at the tip. Sometimes it's just a tiny little thing. S motion. Ooh, look at that green. And now we have seven stars along the Milky Way. With Orchid Bamboo Brush touching a little ink. I will thread through the lighter branch with a little companion then come in and out as more or less a service road and vine does this all the time. They don't want to be alone so there's always companion as they move about. And here we have it, a very simple yet delightful, elegant composition of morning glory. With each day, when the sun comes out, the morning glory opens. And at sunset, the flower closes. It serves as a vivid reminder for us to work diligently and counting days until we meet again soon. I will see you.